Welcome to Lorehammer, Episode 9, The Lost and the Damned. Hello and welcome back to Lorehammer. My name is Eric. Coming at you live from my mom's basement, I'm Mark. Okay. And to my right, All you got right. my most hipsterist of friends, the candy man himself, jo- Jordan. He's not even to your right. He's kitty corner across the table. <laughs> yeah, but the fans don't know. You're I know. <laughs> I know. I'm the candy man now. Yeah. Oh. Is you're that- in the candy, ba- candy uh, man I- game, aren't you? Mark, well, I would love to be on your right-hand side. <laughs> I would love to take uh, that. That <laughs> sultry, pleasing voice that you're hearing, uh, that's Tim. Hi, I'm Tim. How's it going, Tim? Good, good. <clears throat> um, Glad to be here. Yeah, of course you are. Who wouldn't be? Exactly. Yeah, seriously. Be? Yeah, everyone should be. This should be an honor. It is an honor. Wow. <laughs> Do you feel honored? I feel very honored. I'm so pleased. I that. never feel honored to come. <laughs> no, you're you're like the puppet behind this. You don't uh, you don't feel anything other than dissatisfaction with where oh, it's at. Oh, what? You, really? need be, you need to be dissatisfied <laughs> in order for it to get better. Oh, but I'm just doing it for fun, so what do I care? <laughs> um, just going to ask you a couple questions, Tim. Yeah. As kind of a, hey, here's Tim. So, uh, first question, what was the... Oh, and I guess a little bit of backstory. Tim, um, he's like super great with like models, painting, maybe not um, Very playing. artsy. Yeah, super artsy guy. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm great with models, too. <laughs> Well. Wow, Jordan. <laughs> Shameless plug. <Yeah. laughs> um, we meant little plastic models, Jordan. Yeah, that, oh, that's that all, all I can get around. <laughs> but I've that's not all he gets around. <laughs> well. um, all right, so what was the very first model you painted? Um, it was definitely a space marine. I had like a friend. Uh, I was like maybe eight years old and I went to his house. I knew nothing of Warhammer and he had um, this space Marine um, that he got from school, I guess from one of his other friends. And I thought it was like a toy, but I was like, hold hold on. Who's the friend's house you went to? uh, That's what you were thinking. No, but if it was like John, Mm. no, no, it was like no one you guys know. Oh really? It was like a long time ago. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But I was was thinking it all goes back to Mark. (laughs) Everyone else says that. (laughs) Everyone (laughs) else who's been actually, yeah. Like, uh, okay. uh, Well, Tim can tell us. It was, it was the the prehistory of Mark. (laughs) Yes. Mark Mark -Mark era. (laughs) Pre Mark era. (laughs) Interesting. Okay. Okay. So someone we don't even know. Yeah. And then I saw this space screen sitting on his shelf. Um, and I was like, that is so awesome. What is that? So I asked him about it. It's the only like, Warhammer uh, model he had. I don't even think he, <laughs> he just had one it. plastic model. But I somehow convinced him to like let me paint it for him, and um, I just ended up like I just took it and didn't give it back to him. And that was <laughs> the first one that I ended up painting. Do you still have it? Uh, I don't think so. It's probably mutated into like one of my chaos um, <laughs> parts or something. Yeah. I might still have it actually, but it's. It's no, very, no it's irrecognizable now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It might be in the bits bin or something. <laughs> now, would you have ever painted, like, model cars or anything like that to get the hand of painting miniatures, or is it kind of all just... Yeah. You picked up that one, and you're like, well, I'm amazing. No, actually, well... <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'm the best. <laughs> yeah. Like... I, we started out with, um, I made, like, paper, like, airplanes, but not, like, paper airplanes. Like, I would actually build models out of, like, paper, like, giant, like... Um, paper models of airplanes basically and okay. then um, I moved to like plastic models and then I did I did that for a bit and I did some um, like model competitions <laughs> non catwalk uh, oh I was going to say <laughs> so Jordan's probably very that was Matt Jordan's kind of, uh, competition um, and then uh, yeah and then I got into Warhammer and um, I kind of went soft like straight space marines you know, very vanilla. He went soft. Um, <laughs> really, he was really into it, and then he went yeah, soft. Yeah, and then he went soft. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then it, from there, it's just, you know, I've been, enjoyed it, doing the models and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, like, the first time I actually played Warhammer would have been with Tim. Really? I think so, yeah. yeah. That was probably um, my first game as well. Yeah. But you guys came to the hobby separately. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. How, what was the... What armies? You were probably Tau. Yeah. And was I, I, I... Well, I think the very first game we played, like, I had the battle for McCraig box us. Oh, yeah. So I would have played, yeah. like, a Nid battle, but then, like, right. a week later, you know, I bought a Tau army. Yeah, so, yeah. 
Yeah, but okay. I think it was my Templar. Yeah, it would have been yeah. against your Templar. Yeah, for sure. Oh, is that where I picked up my Templar from? No, was all his bits. Oh no 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 no. I was I was doing Templar before they re released Templar. Yeah, like yeah. it was just like. Before they were cool, basically. So. Oh come on! And then they got You're big. So ahead of them. And then I was like, I can't do Temple anymore. Everyone's like, Hard Marshall Hellbridge, and I was like, Okay, I got to move uh, on, you know. So maybe Jordan isn't my most hipster. <laughs> maybe Tim is now. Okay, well Only let's read the episode. Warhammer, can, can confirm. Can confirm. <laughs> he probably drinks tea out of mason jars. <laughs> you do, don't you? No, I drink tea out of um, Land Raiders, so <laughs> <laughs> just uh, hollow it out. And... Goblets. <laughs> Goblets, yeah. All Skulls, right. I mean. What, um, what is the best one, like your most memorable or what you think is like the best model you ever painted? Oh, uh, man, I don't know. The best one. Um, I think actually my most recent work is my favorite, okay. which is like my Nurgle, um, my Plague Marine kill team really that i've was working on they're, they're pretty good which is kind of funny because like you think nurgle is like very easy to paint or whatever but because it's like organic and it's just There's to get so it many right different shades like yeah. the greens and browns and yeah yeah so and i kind of branched into like um doing airbrushing and stuff as well so i, I was able to kind of do a lot of experimenting so i think my favorite stuff is my most recent stuff which is so those are the plague marines yeah yeah my death guard stuff yeah have you I'd say so. have you seen any of the new death guard models that have come out recently i have yeah okay yeah, i did you like them <laughs> i think they're i think they're cool i mean the whole the whole um where games workshop is moving with like this kind of i don't know things are like pre built together and just like yeah. it just fits like i love hacking together hacking apart things yeah. and just like kit bashing. the little yeah kit bashing all that stuff i really like that so when they start like kind of making these pre-made pre-posed guys like i'm not too big of a fan but mm, yeah i mean with, with nurgle it's pretty hard to do because like there's, yeah like yeah. how do you move around like a bloated stomach or like right. all those mutations <laughs> but a lot yeah. of the kits yeah are kind of doing that well yeah. i know the gene stealers like it was the same thing yeah. like you just had you knew exactly what pose like yeah. for what guy so that mm -hmm. it is very different from like four or five years ago when yeah. really yeah. like you just you slap off the wrist and you could really move it and yeah so. yeah. yeah yeah i get that mm -hmm. so you like the death ones hey eh? death guards the death ones the death ones <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like yeah. i like i'm seeing them all over like twitter oh, right yeah. now like everyone's buying like mortarion and the death guard and painting yeah them. yeah they look so cool and it just Mm -hmm. makes me so sad that i can't paint <laughs> I, well that's why i don't go on instagram or yeah. social media because yeah, i yeah. see other people's work and i'm like huh no i'm i, well, I am, mine can just i'm crushingly depressed yeah always always yeah yeah always like I'm just, <laughs> there's never a good point how like, how much of that depression is warhammer related painting related and how much is yeah. just your general life uh it's probably like an 80 30 split for which one wait <laughs> that's hmm. yeah it doesn't matter uh <laughs> yes 80 80 80 percent so i'm i'm gesturing to people on my right no one's on my right you can't do basic math no it's podcasts and shambles <laughs> what a wreck yeah well that's how much of a wreck my life is it doesn't even matter to me <laughs> uh yeah it's got to be 80 percent warhammer 30 percent real life mm, okay that's not too yeah. bad which equals one messed up eric <laughs> uh okay 99 problems and a bitch ain't one eh no she ain't one <laughs> no She's all 99. <laughs> <laughs> that's more than one, so that's why it works. Yeah. I actually I got that from an Eminem song, but uh, I'll just say that. <laughs> you what, know what? Was it was its dude. original? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Cuz here I was about to award you the ah, I was best playing. comeback yes, possible. Yes. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Writing him thank you notes for that wonderful diss. <laughs> Um, if you could paint any model, like anyone you've ever seen, yeah, what would it be? <clears throat> oh man, um, hmm. I think what would be kind of cool to do is like um, paint some like really old like Games Workshop models, like the ancient ones. Dude, I know they, that, those like are gross. Slanted. I know, I know that they look so weird. Yeah, like, yeah, but they're like <laughs> so crazy looking. Is there yeah. actually ancient one? 
models? No. Oh, no. no, no, no not no, not no. like Slam. literally oh, ancient oh, ones. He means like the early releases. <laughs> oh, of like I see. I first see, generation. I see. Like, <laughs> mine was about to be blown. And... <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. We just... argued so long about what they looked like. <laughs> well, at least <laughs> there's I, models? At least I clarified it for the listeners. So. There you go. Uh, there you go. That's <laughs> what you're here for, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um, I think just because they'd be kind of a fun thing to do. Um, vintage so you know that's always that would be cool. super vintage yeah would i mean do, like, like you know where the space marines like blues? we're basically like the size of cadian guys now like yeah you know that would be uh i was looking at a model of um what are they the thunder uh thunder warriors yeah thunder warriors and like an old model and like the description is like these guys are like you know made by the emperor himself more powerful than you know the the adeptus astartes and you look yeah. at the model which is like an, <laughs> like tiny little guy, you yeah, know, like yeah. this is like a Thunder Warrior, like yeah. compared to the new models. So yeah. it's kind of funny, but that'd be, I don't know, that'd be a fun one to do. So, okay. Would yeah. you do like electric blues and like make it like as if it was back in the day or would you try and paint it to a realism? I mean, actually doing it realistic might be kind of fun because it would be fun to take like the craziness of what the models used to like. Look the like the 1980s. And then, <laughs> yeah. But then do it like super realistic right. and, you know. That'd be fun to do. And there's like a lot of Forge World stuff I would actually love to get into. Um, but it's a bit out of my price range. So yeah, a bit out of <laughs> not for price Not range. for Mark, but yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not no, saying. he does eBay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he does like Chinese Forge World. <laughs> they the work amazing. It. Except yeah. for when they don't. They save me a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I still have two. Three. How many does a human have? Two. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think you're down to your last quarter. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, now we're going to get into the real questions. Uh-oh. Uh, when did you first feel that tug of chaos on your immortal soul? Wow. Um, we need ominous music right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> like, who's playing the... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> don't worry, guys. I'll put that in post. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah. Thanks, Jordan. It's not going in. <laughs> it better. <laughs> Oh man, um, so I kind of always like was like a white knight for a while, I think, and I was like only you know only only like only the Black Templar, only Space Marine, <laughs> burn the witch, you know, burn the witch, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember the... you had like uh, like you carved off skulls and stuff, and yeah, I was a little yeah. eccentric. I was yeah, so yeah. pious, <laughs> and then I just kind of like I got. Playing the game, I just got, like, really sick of, like, losing, and I didn't like losing, <laughs> and I was like, I just feel like... Well, is that a Templar problem? Or is that you played me? It might be. <laughs> it's probably a me versus Mark problem, yeah. <laughs> where Mark has these supernatural uh, skills or... I sacrifice a lot of to ghosts. the dice gods, so... <laughs> so we call them chaos visions. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, I got kind of got, like, sick of losing, so I was like, why don't I just pick a team that I kind of, like kind of just don't like in the first place and i was like and then i i realized that chaos really fit my vision because <laughs> oh boy because like for chaos um for a while i played corn right yeah. if you lose that's blood spilt for the corn god yep. the blood god so it's like i don't lose you know <laughs> i kind of win because i did my job as chaos so i i really appreciate your I dedication just, to the lore and yeah you know, i just want to say tim you know you're not actually feeding corn no right? he is i am yeah, oh, I mean, uh, corn was born he, in Mark, uh, he's in deeper than we thought <laughs> oh i knew <laughs> you knew i knew he knew there i need a place to sacrifice goats and where else <laughs> to go except for a chaos player's house there you go so yeah that's kind of that's what drew me into chaos and then i actually ended up really liking the lore of chaos because they they're they're more like there's more there's kind of more fun right like really i feel like is. space marines yeah. are more kind of free. limited they're like yeah more freeing you just like it's more variety and you they have like so many cool things they're like broken into war bands or squabbling they're like really spoken like a true heretic <laughs> <laughs> oh come over to chaos it'll be fun <laughs> it'll be fun they say you don't want to listen to the emperor <laughs> that guy's a douche a real douche <laughs> he is so um <laughs> But no, I've had a lot of fun um, uh, playing uh, Chaos, and uh, they're really actually fun to model as well, you know? Because you can get kind of boring with Space Marines. It's it really like, can. Yeah. Same guys, yeah, but they, you can, like, it's really... It's file with Marine, right? Yeah, yeah. You can really, like, diversify with, um, with your uh, Chaos Space Marines, so that's what drew me in. Mutations, yeah. 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 Um, 
<clears throat> and probably my favorite question for you. Uh, so you you started with corn. Yeah. Then you went to uh, Nurgle. Yeah. Um, do you ever regret not choosing Slanesh? Let me phrase that a different way. Okay, go for it. When will Slanesh be poking you? Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At what point will you present to Slanesh? Yeah. Oh, you you always feel the poke of Slanesh. <laughs> <laughs> it is always poking you. <laughs> but it's whether you succumb to it or not. So when will you succumb? No, I don't like that. <laughs> no means no. <laughs> I don't consent. <laughs> Actually, like, I do have some Noise Marines models. Yeah, I guess you do. Yeah, right? I do. And, like, I, I, I would love those. to do, actually, like, a um, like a Slanish kill team or something. Because I like the idea of this. their sonic weapons. And yeah. that's it really awesome. Cool. It's such yeah. a cool, like, unique it, concept. Yeah, it is unique. So I love that part of it. Um, yeah, I might move on to them. But um, for now, um, I'll just... Uh, but I don't know if I can. Because um, according to, like, Lorehammer War... Um, the Black uh, Legion, they're, like, pretty loose when it comes to, like, who they serve sometimes. Or they'll just serve whoever they want to. So sometimes when, like, a Chaos Space Marine has devoted himself to serve one, then he decides to change his mind. Then, like, the um, demonic whatever, um, the the Chaos Spirit or whatever that's been, like, a, that's kind of attached to him okay. will, like, leave him. And then he just becomes, like a husk or like a shell of who he really is and he's just like totally lost and so that's what your, your fear he loses his mind yeah your fear <laughs> yeah. is that the blessing of nurgle yeah will would, leave you yeah and you'll just turn into gibbering little chaos spawn. that might happen yeah so <laughs> i'm trying to avoid that becoming a <laughs> probably spawn. just avoid that yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna say, i might yeah. be locked in <laughs> happens to the best of us <laughs> Yeah, Mark's become a chaos spawn so many times. Doesn't even phase him anymore. No, no. It's just part of his whole transformation, like chrysalis, cocoon, yeah. chaos spawn. And I yeah, emerge yeah. a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> or tentacle butterfly. Tentacle butterfly. <laughs> yeah. But beautiful nonetheless. So. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Majestic. Uh, majestic. I, like, you being like, a modeler and a, a painter right? yeah. like that's the majority of what you do yeah uh like i painted for the first time okay this week yeah it's been a long time a few months yeah it's been a while but like yeah. it's my gene stealer called this okay right? so before like i painted necron and i was like yeah I was like, i'm so good <laughs> oh god <laughs> right like it's just silver <laughs> hey you guys want to see a cool miniature check out this necron i painted freshly sprayed <laughs> oh, then i painted Only took me two minutes yeah i'm pretty good <laughs> no but like like i'm a i'm a terrible painter so it's hard enough to get me into painting so then yeah. like necron is easy like i did them all i felt good about it <laughs> dry brush wash dud well yeah okay yes that <laughs> yeah. was pretty much what it was so then oh i was like goodness. well i'm gonna do the gene sealer cults now and i mm -hmm. felt like super stoked to do it um i hate painting <laughs> i absolutely hate it like half it's of tricky. our listeners no probably even more like probably not in their head they're like yeah it's it's just something you do <laughs> <laughs> you just you buckle down yeah you just accept your fate oh you man do it it's part of it yeah, I, it makes me wish though i picked like a space marine chapter because like sure. there's so much like different things yeah. on like it's a cloth unit and there's armor and there's flesh and I really yeah. just wish I'd picked Imperial Fists and I could just do everything yellow and black, a little bit of white here and there. Mm. You know what though? Just, yeah. just it's never too late. Fork over that wall right now. <laughs> we'll get you a brand new Imperial Fist He's army. Right. Take my visa. <laughs> yeah. Just just don't open any bills no, the next time. You, know, you should months. always have you know like you should that. always have a Space Marine army like back like on your shelf unopened just in case that's your backup <laughs> that's your like is that what you do yeah that's your like fire axe that you break you know when you're in emergency, in case of like, emergency. oh i screwed up the gene stealers <laughs> bust it out quick hide this <laughs> burning party <laughs> oh man oh good, good stuff good stuff uh okay well as of recording this episode right now um uh, we're currently at eight nine, eight, nine. Oh, we're, we're at nine? Oh, is it eight or nine? It was 860 last I... Oh, oh, you're talking night. about downloads. Yes. Oh, I thought you were talking about episodes. No, not, not episodes. Oh, wow. So we're currently at 860 downloads. By the time this episode is released, we're going to be hitting 1,000. Pretty close. So Crazy. kind of in like recognition of that, um, we've had some people <clears throat> comment on the... I don't want to say horrible, wretched abomination that is hey. our <laughs> symbol. Hey. <laughs> 
But that's pretty much what it boils down to. Eric. <laughs> yes, Mark. much like your neck rods, I took two minutes <laughs> and I scrounged the internet for that logo. <laughs> and then I horribly in paint word or word paint or whatever. Word paint. Word paint. MS I painted paint. some words <laughs> on the bottom. I just that bumped you, it up from two minutes to three. I just want you all to know it's not Comic Sans. <laughs> it looks like Comic Sans, but it's totally not. Anyways, uh, but kind of in honor of like where we're going, um, it, I mean, it's more popular than I ever thought it was. Yeah, it is. And uh, I was, I was more figuring like, hey, we got a couple friends to listen to it, no problem. Yeah. So if they only knew who we were, you know, like. I, it wouldn't help our cause. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But um, I'm pretty persuasive, I've been told. <laughs> oh boy. See if they just Kathy knew you. doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom does not count. <laughs> She's actually all those downloads. She's creating proxy servers in other countries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like downloading. Spending all her retirement money on me. Yeah. Just gotta to make you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, you're a failure in real life. <laughs> Whoa. Well, that's generous of you. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you. So I thank you. Good so sir. here's what's going on. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do two little contests that we would, we would like some participation in. Um, if you know what our symbol is, like what it means, then what I need you to do is I need you to like our page on Facebook and private message us. Do not post it on the wall. If you post it on the wall and if I find it, I'm just going to delete that post because you're screwing over the contest for everyone else. <laughs> so yeah, Mark, I'm going to do it. Okay. I will be that hostile. Nazi. Oh, very hot, hostile. Yeah, it's gonna get worse. Don't worry. So how how are you choosing a winner for this? Uh, so what it's gonna be is you have to like us on Facebook, okay, and you have to step be, one. Yeah, and then step two is to private message Lorehammer. Okay, step three, bank account information or what? <laughs> step three, we need your social insurance number, yeah. your address, your maiden mother's name, yeah. your elementary teacher's and your name, first pet. and your first pet. Yeah, simple. And then you'll the and Nigerian you just, prince will just deposit yeah. the money into your yeah. account. Yeah. Oh, 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 and you got to actually, you know, say what the logo is. Oh, right. Die, that is die. a step. Yes. Uh, not so, an important one. No, not really. We just need your bank information, really. <laughs> uh, so like us on Facebook, private message us with what the symbol is. If you are the very first person, uh, we would like to give you a $25 gift card to GW. Yeah. Or if uh, you don't have a GW in your area, like. We'll give yeah, you. We'll, a, we'll work it out yeah, somehow. But the money should be going into 40k or fantasy or GW yeah. must have like online gift cards, eh? They probably do. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, but, we we are gonna make it work for yeah. you. But we want we need so you it, to like the page. We need you to message us. Yeah. Okay. Now, having said that, if you agree with uh, the other statements that our logo is a steaming hot pile of trash. Um, we have another <laughs> Mark. It's not against you. It's just that everything you do is garbage, terrible, a steaming pile of trash. Yeah, I wasn't gonna say that, but just just get your shit. Just get all your shit together, put it in a bag, <laughs> and just deal with it. Take it to the shit store. I don't even care. Anyways, um, so we want your help. If you think that you can make a better logo. Uh, for <laughs> Tim, stop laughing. It's a challenge. We're not at all using you guys. Yeah, no, not you at can't all. beat what I did. <laughs> if if you are also sick and tired of it, and uh, you think you could win a contest with it, we want to see a submission. So create a logo if you want using the same symbol. So those are the only yeah. two requirements, or I guess there's three. It needs to have the same symbol. It needs to have the word Lorehammer on it, and it needs to be 1300 by 1300. Yeah. So bonus you also, points is if you can fit a heart somewhere on the logo without like like super me, subtle me not finding it. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you turn oh. a skull into a heart, like the nose part. There you go. Bonus. What if points. they change like one single pixel into a heart? How, well, it's then like Mark would never find it, and oh, then that's bonus points. Take notes, take notes, but people. <laughs> bonus points has no bearing on actual. Yeah, probably cash. probably don't. Uh, yeah, if you want to win, <laughs> so uh, you you again. You gotta like us on Facebook and then submit the image, post it on our Facebook wall, and let us see like what it is. And if we like one, like we will pay you for that image. We'll buy that image off you for fifty bucks, but we're gonna pay you in GW gift cards. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so better so hugs. Paid. Yeah. So to all the haters in the world who are trashing on our uh, logo, I say be the change. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Jordan, you are that so is... inspirational. Jordan Swain for president of 2020. 
And yes. Uh, how how Emperor. could Kanye ever hope to win? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we we would like to buy that if we like it enough, we will buy it off you. Yeah. So so I'm kind of excited about these two things. It could be it could I, be really fun. I'm curious if people will get the logo because I know I showed a couple people that like like Christian. He didn't know what it was. Really? Yeah. That does surprise me. Yeah. So I'm curious. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And what then happens. like it'll make sense why we have that logo. Oh well, don't hint it out. Anyways. Well, because it involves 40K, right? Oh, that's right. Like, it's a 40K logo. <laughs> you got me there, sir. <laughs> and yeah, the, the other competition, cool. It should yeah. be good. Yeah. It's going to be great if there's like one person that submits an image and then we absolutely hate it. <laughs> so where well, there's only one submission, but we don't buy that image. Yeah, yeah. Delete off Facebook page or <laughs> yeah. whatever. Just block them yeah. too. Just completely <laughs> blocked. Like don't ever contact us again. <laughs> Change our pages name. <laughs> yeah. Start from scratch. Yeah. It's like that X that you just never want to deal with. Holy cow. So we're like... 30 minutes in almost. Well, that's good because we're about to start. Oh, perfect. Covered a lot of great ground. So. We did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had to, I was kind of posting on Facebook and Twitter about that we were doing a chaos, like um, Lost in the Damned episode. So someone asked us and he said, his name is Skylar, and he says, Wait. Yes. <laughs> Who's Skylar? It doesn't matter. Oh, it's okay. just a person. Some okay. random person out there we don't know. Who, who, who knows who he is? Anyways. But uh, he said, uh, does chaos have any real counter? And I'm pretty sure, like we've touched on this a couple times. So, Mark, like, what do you mean by that? I have no idea. So we're just going to interpret it. Like, how, how, like, how, how can want. you beat chaos? I'm assuming there that's any, what it means. Any way to beat chaos? I didn't really clarify. I kind of just said thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Yeah. <laughs> like a chump. So I'll start off with the easiest answer. You ever heard of? Uh, Blanks. Oh my god. Blanks. <laughs> no, they don't beat chaos because a bolt gun will swiftly end a blank. Yeah. I'm gonna say the Emperor. Faith yeah. in the Emperor. Faith in the Lectio Make, Divinitis. Yeah, and making sure you're paying your tithes. That also does a great help <laughs> Absolutely. to the cause, you know. Absolutely. Um if you have a a blessed bolter shell around your neck, yeah. that also helps you defeat chaos. Uh it's great counter. Probably the best thing is um just give yourself to it. To chaos. Just let go. Okay, so... There's no point in yeah. fighting it. Huh. Is it really worth fighting? You have lots of options. You have, you know, sexual perversion. <laughs> yeah. You can make sacrifices to a blood god. Uh-huh. You can accept a life full of uh, boils and pestilence. <laughs> pestilence. Uh-huh. But really good well, you times. Can be Do you like magic over. tricks? There's also one. He <laughs> does great magic tricks. <laughs> well... You know... That doesn't sound too bad. No. Yeah, lots maybe, of great options. Maybe so. you guys are onto something. <laughs> Um, and then the other question was just like, how are they defeated? But you just, you can't beat chaos. You would have to, maybe you guys already covered this, but you'd have to, uh, oh. you'd have to be void of the universe would have to be void of like all, like any form of emotion basically. Yeah. Right. Which is yeah. impossible. So, well, yeah. So would, that, would, unless everything is killed. So that would end it. Well, that wait, would, wait, wait. So oh. nids, they don't have a, they don't have a war presence. So once the nids eat our entire galaxy chaos is defeated thank you nids yeah no because ca- we we well maybe we didn't finish it but we threw around the idea that chaos is kind of a self-rolling snowball now thank you nids <laughs> <laughs> oh all right i guess we're just choosing to go with the nids theory now aren't the necron soulless too yes. right so they could also maybe there we go. Know. Now we got two people. You got two people who. Oh, will, oh my god. Yeah. Who are just. I thought. Yeah, I the thought the grade. Goal. The the. I think the. The what is it? The projected end of the forty first millennium would probably be like Tyranids or Necron because they're just. Yeah. They're the if, impossible like if, armies. If, if, yeah. If yeah. anything has anything remotely to a soul, then, you know, it'll there'll be eternal war. Yeah. So. John always goes on. And Frankie too. So two brothers, they always go on about how their army's they gonna. Go on. They go on and, <laughs> they go on, on and on. But they always go on about like, oh yeah, if all the orcs got together, they'd be unstoppable. And then well, I mean, technically he's not wrong. Yeah, and then John's always like, oh, there's more nids in the dark creatures. We will take the scouts. They always say shit. But uh, <laughs> well, so I just look no at him and I say, well, that's not gonna happen ever. <laughs> so have you ever heard of money? games workshop games and workshop money? likes money <laughs> so if they if they do what you want them to do <laughs> they will no longer make money <laughs> okay is it, wait hold on is there a possibility that the nids if they were to annihilate life from the galaxy 
would they move on from that galaxy and just leave? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like so that, that's could, what we think they're doing. You yeah. could reboot 40k if you wanted to. <laughs> oh. Age of Sigmar yeah. like that. Yes. <laughs> well, anyways, that's an aside. But yeah, we haven't even done thought. our Nids episode yet. No, getting close. Which is just pretty teasing cool. them. You know. Yeah. Hey guys, do you like to hear getting about them. Nids? <laughs> Tyranids. You just really <laughs> like <laughs> Nids. <laughs> Tyranips. <laughs> Tyranips. <laughs> Tyranips. <laughs> Okay. Good thing it's not a video podcast. Yeah, that's probably a good thing. I'll get my shirt I'm not back gonna, on. Put yeah. your shirt back on. Um, <clears throat> I guess let's just get into the meat then. Yeah. Um, what did we talk about last? We did like loyalist humanity from after the horse heresy right up up until before 40, 40K. Yeah. Okay, so that, that covers well, really a lot. Well, basically, yeah, all of 40K up to, yeah, M40, 999. Yeah, yeah, up un- until like what's yeah. most current. Yeah. So that includes a lot of like the – like the High Lords of Terra and their power versus like the Ecclesiarchy and Yeah. So there was a lot of power struggle just in humanity. Yeah, even though they're all loyalists. Yeah, they still fight amongst themselves. Yeah. yeah. So. But some of them are more Yeah. Like the biggest one almost would have been like George Van Dyer. Gog. Gorg. George. Definitely not George. Well it's Goge. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I can't <laughs> Read, um, <laughs> like, yeah, but like he he never heresy. came out as like a chaos follower, but no. he split the galaxy in half again almost. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So it's even, humanity, right? Well, it's what happens when you lack the leader. Yeah, you just people try to grab a slice of pie. Yeah. Anyways, so that we did all the loyalists. So now we're gonna focus on um, humanity, the lost and the damned, the the bad half of humanity. Yeah, the so, losers. So some would say, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what happened to all of humanity? That wasn't a loyalist um, after the Horus Heresy. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and the very first part of that is going to include the Corrupted Legions. Yeah. Those, um, those cool guys. Those cool guys. Cool. Yeah. So after the Battle of Terra, um, the Imperium went on a crusade to rid the galaxy of the Chaos Insurgents. So they went on the scour- scouring? The scouring? Yeah, not the scouring. Scouring. The scouring. And they went on a crusade to get rid of them. So Chaos was pushed back to different parts of the galaxy, the biggest one being the Eye of Terror. Yeah. So that's kind of where we'll pick up for them. So who, who all was pushed back? Uh, well, it would be all of the legions, but let's list them out. Yeah, So all the fallen legions. Yeah, the fallen legions. Yeah. So Emperor's Children. Yeah. Uh, Iron Warriors, Night Lords, World Eaters, Death Guard, Thousand Sons, the Black Legion, which were the Sons of Horus, Sons of Horus, and before that the Luna Wolves. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll get into. Oh, well, there's two bit. more, and then Word yeah. Bearers, and then the Alpha Legion. So yeah. those are the ten that uh, had fallen to chaos over the course of the Horus Heresy. Yeah. And uh, so they. Most of them went to the Eye of Terror. There is a couple, like the Alpha Legion, like no one really knows. Yeah, they just disappeared. Yeah, that's kind of their thing. Um, <laughs> it's kind of their thing. <laughs> kind of their thing. But, they stayed out of the Eye of Terror, right? I think they did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they kind of just did their own. Yeah. A- apparently, um, Alpha Legion, because they avoided like going into like warp space and whatnot, they yeah. like actually didn't get any of the effects of... like. Um, like that warp time or whatever would do so a lot of them yeah. are like as really mutated, mutated and like yeah. whatever as like the rest of the the other guys are so yeah and where like uh some of the people who went into the eye of terror they they like in 40k still fought in 30k like right, some of them were in the, the time is so weird where i don't think you're gonna find an alpha legion person who fought in the Horus heresy and stuff you you probably yeah. could but it would be rare yeah yeah so uh Let's go into a little detail about each legion from from the top. Just kind of right. give them a little bit of flavor. Um, oh, so we keep saying legion, just in case people don't know Space Marines. Oh my gosh, yeah. Maybe like, we never clarified this. I'm sure we did, but just in case. Yeah, so a, a legion is one of the founding... Like, the Emperor created 20 Primarchs, and he created 20 legions. And these are, like, the original of the originals. Yeah. And then after the Horus Heresy and Raboot does his Codex Astartes... That's when everything shatters into chapters. Yeah. Where the loyalists, though, since they don't care what Boot did, they are still legions. Sorry, chaos. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, chaos. I mean. Chaos doesn't chaos care. Is yeah. Still yeah. They yes. don't. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And but there are also like chapters of chaos. Yeah, there's some loyalist chapters that fall, and we'll go into that a bit yeah. after the the main legions. Yeah, but it's it's like like the ultramarines had to split up. Yeah, like because they, they they didn't want somebody to be able to take all the power. Yeah, yeah. Where chaos is all about getting power for yourself. Exactly. So they didn't care. They're like, we we want six million marines in one legion, no problem. Yeah. I mean, there aren't that many, but no, that would be the dream. <laughs> hmm. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's start with a little bit of flavor on everyone. Uh, take it away, Mark. Emperor's children. So their primarch is Fulgrim, Yay. the Phoenician. And uh, during the Horus Heresy and the Great Crusade, they were known to be like great artists and perfectionists. Perfectionists. Yeah, yeah. and like e- even em- like verging on being an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Great minds. You know, they don't care about weaker minds. They just right. Yeah. Um, so they were, whatever they did, they did to the best of their ability. Um, if they, like from war, from sword fighting, all the way down to if they're like carving a statue, they did to the best of their ability. Um, their legion was like from the offset, super small. And like, they had some great catastrophe that wiped their legion down to like a very small number. I don't even think they clarify what it is. But uh, I don't remember. Yeah, they. I think they haven't done anything on it yet because mm. this was like I, I'm pretty sure it was even before Fulgrim. Oh, okay. Yeah, but hmm. it just shows like no, that is true because I like I'm just reading the books now. Yeah, and they said that um, the Luna Wolves worked with the Emperor's Children until the Emperor's Children was, was bigger, large yeah. enough to act autonomously. Yeah, because I think then hmm. once they got Fulgrim, then they, they really start, picked up. Yeah, and it just shows like their their skill that they go from being like one of the smallest legions. To having a huge impact on the galaxy, probably in the top four, hmm. I'd imagine. Um, yeah, just because yeah. their their drive and their perfection, right? Yeah, uh, Iron Warriors, uh, Iron Warriors, and Portarabo, which is their premark, is uh, their great siege warfare people. Mm. Amazing. Second, no, no, the Se- best. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not second, but they were always given the second job. Yeah, yeah. Versus the Imperial Fist. Yeah. Um, do we want to jump up to Empress Children for one second and just say why they fell Did to I chaos? Did I interrupt you? I'm sorry, Mark. No, I just... I apologize profusely. Because well, you just reminded me, like... Oh, well. Go for it. Okay, so Fulgrim fell to chaos um, due to a slow seduction. He found, like, this demon sword on a planet and was, like, slowly, literally, like, corrupted, mm. like, by this sword. That would do Who, it. Yeah. Demon sword. <laughs> And, That's uh, not true at all. There are people who are stronger. <laughs> Have you ever heard of, heard of Arthas from WoW? I hate that guy. <laughs> He's the coolest. Um, oh, I was thinking of the... Uh, oh, uh, the Castellian Crow. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like, so the demon kept whispering, like, perfection, perfection. And then, like, eventually it was like, I know how I can give you perfection. And he literally then possessed Fulgrim. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Whoa. So, like, Fulgrim... Is no longer Fulgrim. Like, yeah, he's, Fulgrim a, he's a demon. Fulgrim is trapped in a painting, apparently. A painting? Yeah, so... Wow. <laughs> it gets weird, but, uh... Yeah, like, Fulgrim... Sounds paint- like some kind of Disney story. <laughs> <laughs> With a lot it's more It's a blood. demon painting. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, Fulgrim is no longer Fulgrim. So that's kind of how oh. he felt, due to, like, this slow seduction. Some people are trapped in the Eye of Terror, some people in a painting. I mean, <laughs> you know... Whatever hmm. floats your demon boat. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably like the Mona Lisa. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> smile. It's beautiful. The perfect smile. You know. Oh, perfection. Yeah. yeah. Either that or it's a wreck. That's what he always and wanted. It's just torture. <laughs> he just wanted to be in a painting. <laughs> Everyone's painting the emperor. Why can't they paint me? <laughs> so hilarious, yeah. Iron Warriors. Yeah. Um, like Eric was saying, um, he was joking. Like, oh, are they the best siege siege warfare? And yeah, like. They were really good. And the other legion he's talking about is Imperial Fists, who remained loyal. And the difference between these two, and this is the reason why, like the big reason why Porter Apple fell, is because while the Imperial Fists were good at siege warfare, uh, the Emperor took notice of them and honored them for it and said, here, come back to Terra. Like, come build, f- build our fortifications on Terra. Yeah, Holy and, Terra. Yeah, exactly. Where Porter Apple was given the shittiest jobs, like... See that huge fortress planet over there? Go siege it. Siege it. Yeah. Sacrifice all your men. And, like, no thanks. No nothing. Just send your men wave after wave. Watch your your, your children die, essentially. Yeah. 
and uh, you yeah, gotta get bitter over that eventually. A lot. There's a lot of bitterness going on in the Primarch. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. When we did our Horus Heresy episode, I think we just chalked it up to oh yeah, everyone's just a little bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's why how and why. Oh, we had a catastrophe. A mic fell over. Oh no. Ha. Uh, so that's why uh, they fell. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So night lords, night lords are uh, they're known for just being like just villains like even during the horus heresy they were just villains they went to planets they murdered the entire population women children anything uh and the main reason for this was because conrad crows cruz their primarch was born on a planet that was eternally uh was shrouded nighttime or yeah dark, eternally yeah. shrouded in darkness so he uh, went around. So there's like a lot of criminal activity. So he went around and he just murdered all the criminals, basically. Like he'd go and he'd flay them. Oh, wow. Yeah. And like put them from the ramparts. And like, this is a warning. The next criminal, you're next up there. So eventually, like, there's no more crime on this planet because they know if they commit a crime, they, they're they going to get killed. So that's like the main thing. The main thing that gets Conrad Cruz, like, he just loves doing terror attacks and, like, terrorizing people. Like, they were, they were also really good, I think, at, like, instigating, like, taxation and apparently, like, the will of the Emperor. So they would, yeah. like, if you look at, like, um, a Night Lord, they're often or in, like, ornate skulls and their whole bat thing, right? But, yeah. like, that was bef before that they would do that, make themselves look very fearsome to instill fear, you know? Yeah. Yeah. even as like righteous space marines but because yeah, they like were they more were so always... like you know they just wanted to put the fear of the emperor and people yeah so when you know chaos comes it's not too hard to take these people who are already like twisted yeah like, they, like, they like live on yeah. the fact that they put other people like down yeah and that's how they kind of fell the one crazy thing too about their legion is uh a lot of their legion eventually start to get started to become or they were recruited from a criminal population. So even though Conrad Cruz, like, uh, did away with b criminals on his planet, when he left, criminals started to pop back up because, like, it's a it's a dark world. Crime. Right, yeah, Like, yeah. you gotta scrimp and steal for everything. Hmm. So, like, a lot of their people were criminals that it, that they drafted. Like, so that, okay. oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that mentality, like, a little bit of that will always stay with you. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, next, we have the World Eaters. I did a couple. Does anyone want to take this one? Uh, Angron. Angry Man. The Angry Man himself. <laughs> the Angry Man himself. Why did the Angry Man himself fall to chaos? Mm, great question. Thanks, Mark. I'm going to field <laughs> this one back to Mark. <laughs> it probably wasn't very hard. Just say, well, <laughs> there we go. He's angry. I mean, yeah. he's probably angry at a lot of things. So yeah. Pretty sure hard. he was bitter. Yeah. <laughs> he was, in fact. So <laughs> on his planet, he was born into like oh, they're gla the gladiator. Yeah. So you know, I remember. Yeah, he was. Um, he was leading a rebellion. Yeah. With all his gladiator friends, and they were losing, and they yeah. were all about to die in a final blaze of glory. Yeah, yeah. But then the emperor tell but they would die free men. Okay. <laughs> They could never take our freedom. So they were capes. Oh, I was going and brave. They were in loincloths. Oh. And no. Um, no, no, no loincloths. All just. Okay, just keep it free. Yeah. 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 You're going to uh, die capes, anyways. Capes, Blaze so, of yes. glory. Yeah, Tons of capes. Go. Yeah. So he was. Uh, they were doing their final battle and they were all going to die. The emperor teleported Angron out at the last second. Yeah. And didn't save any of Angron's family friends people that he had been fighting with forever even though he could have even even though yeah he's the emperor he could have yeah and Agron was pretty pissed yeah so that didn't help for sure that's enough to piss off anybody yeah but he's been, and, and he's been holding that forever yeah the other crazy thing about Angron is on that planet to help gladiate gladiators like be more fierce and stuff the the ruling class would put in what they call butcher nails into the brain and basically these butchered nails that like carve up the person's brain and take out like kindness or like it would also like amplify aggression to the point where uh if they're not being aggressive like if the butcher's nail like sees that they're not being aggressive in their brain yeah it kind of gives them pain so in order for them to continue to not feel pain they would have to be aggressive and keep doing feats of violence 
crazy. So Angron, that's one of the reasons why he's Mr. Angry Man himself. Wait. Because if he's not doing something violent, yeah. he feel he's in pain. So they could be just really nice people. Oh, down they to the are. Core. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. They could be having cups of tea, yeah. petting <laughs> cats, and. It's the only reasonable thing, yeah, to think. <laughs> See, chaos, not that bad, you know. <laughs> oh, my. They got some good people there. Good quality people. Yeah, so. Angron being already pissed off at the Emperor yeah. when Horus comes and gives him the whisper of chaos. He's he's all he's in. He's listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. The Death Guard. Tim, do you know much about them? Your Legion? <laughs> I hope I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. If not, if you do factual errors, you're going to get a nasty message from Christian. Yeah. But just ignore it. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, Mortarian, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, he was their Primarch. Um, as far as like... Horus heresy stuff goes. I'm not too familiar actually with okay. like his backstory. I'm more so like yeah. post heresy knowledge is what I know. So okay, well we'll come back to you then on our post heresy part of this. Then. Yeah. So it it usually all problems stem back to the home planet that the Primarch was born on. Um, their their accomplishments as well as their downfall. Right. Um. So on Mortarion's planet. Uh, there, it was like a toxic world and, uh, they had like the lower class, like deep in valleys where there was no toxic, but then as higher, as you went up higher and higher, the atmosphere became more toxic. And then you get to a point where it's no longer toxic and that's okay. where like the ruling class lived up high above. Yeah. I think it was actually still toxic up there, but the ruling class, they don't really describe it it's weird like so the ruling class is almost like aliens they don't specifically say the word human okay. they could have been demons they had like undead hmm. there was apparently well now there's actually like the uh the civilian population on the plague planet is like beast men and stuff so i don't hmm. know if that's through like mutation or that literally like hmm. there were beast men so living on the planet where did mortarian fall in did he fall into so, the with the regular people or with the ruling class? He fell in with the ruling class, okay. but he was treated more as an oddity because once again, like, I don't think the ruling class was human. Gotcha. So like, he was not really the ruling class, but the, the major warlord on the planet found him and like raised him and used him to fight the lower class. But eventually he escaped down to the planet and then helped lead like a revolt. Okay. And, uh, Mortarion could never go up to the peak of the castle where the, the warlord was, who he never liked. But eventually he raised, like, enough of a militia to try, like, siege that place. And uh, on the night of the siege, the emperor came and landed. And, like, like let me help you. Let me help you, Mortarion. We can do this together. And Mortarion's like, no, I can do it by myself. And he tried, and he couldn't take the toxic levels, and he he basically passed out but the last thing he's seen was like the warlord coming towards him and then the emperor killing the warlord and like he he kind of took it as like a shame on himself almost a little bit mortarion's a pretty complicated character though so that's one of the things he kind of kind of took it as a slight because they like honor i don't know yeah and the other thing that he didn't like um was psychers mortarion mortarion hated psychers <laughs> Okay. The yeah. Emperor's great at picking. His yeah. Top men. I know. It's crazy. So that's the thing. So that that also gets amplified. So he already kind of feels slighted by the Emperor. And then he finds out the Emperor's a psyker. He's like, well, F you. And then he finds out the Emperor's like, yeah, no more psychers. I can be the only psyker. Like when he does wow. the whole Council of Nikea, right? Yeah. Like yeah. He, he basically gets away with or does away with all psychers. And like, Mortarion just sees it as like hypocrisy, like to the extreme. So he did not like the Emperor. But uh, he's also interesting too because when Horace went to him to talk about the heresy, it says that he was one of the hardest to get onto the Chaos's side. Why do you think that was? Well, just because like there was no motivation for it. Like, hmm. He he wasn't like a bad guy. He didn't have butcher nails or like right. He, like no no true like crazy bitterness. Or yeah yeah rivalry. Like he, yeah, but eventually he gave in just because he didn't like the hypocrisy of it, and he didn't like like he he related the emperor to the warlord who had this power over everybody else. Yeah, and like he's like no, I, I'm gonna fight that. Right. So he's also like he might I think 
uh, like a lot of the legions have traits of their primarchs and yeah. traits of death guard. They're very slow. You know, they can I th- imagine there's a lot, they're, but they're very strong and tough and stubborn, and stubborn like yeah. very firm. So it's he probably has a lot of those traits. You know, like yeah, yeah, and just that stubbornness and uh, yeah, he could not tolerate the hypocrisy, and that's kind of why he. He chose the side he did. And eventually he falls in with Nurgle, but we'll get into that later. I was, uh, like, you might have mentioned this while I was reading it, but did you talk about the wall on the planet? Uh, No, I didn't, but I know about it. It's kind of a cool thing. I'll I'll do a quick mention. Uh, When he first landed, um, he was was at the site of a fresh battle, and there were hundreds of bodies strewn across it, uh, but it was in, like, the poison zone. Yeah. Um, And he lands, and all of a sudden he starts crying and crying, and the warlord, like the big guy hears him and he's like well i'm about to kill him yeah but then he's like wait a second how is a person able to like survive in like this poisonous fog so he takes mortarian up and up and up as high as he can go before the fog starts to kill him yeah and then he builds a wall to keep him safe and to keep mortarian trapped below right so then he no well he builds the wall yeah and then he puts his palace on the other side. Yeah, to keep the warlord safe. Yeah, right? exactly. To keep Mortarion yeah. safe. So yeah. then it's he's like, well, Mortarion, like, he can't go past this point, so if I'm here, I'm fine. Yeah. This is kind of cool. Yeah. Crazy. He's an asshole. <laughs> uh, okay. Thousand Sons. Aw. Oh, boy. Eric, take it away. Tell Aww. me all about what heresies well, you've learned. Okay. It, it was really cool. The Thousand Sons, to me, it's... Like, when we were first discussing it, and we've been... T- obviously, like, the heresy has been, like, geez, how many episodes now that we've been talking about it? But Yeah, yeah, it comes up quite often, I find. <laughs> it is odd. <laughs> but um, the Thousand Suns, I always just thought were, like, just another legion that fell to chaos, but they aren't. Not and, at first, And no. every time that I talk about it, Mark's like, oh, it's such a tragic tale. It's so sad. <laughs> and I'm like, you're such a... <laughs> a tear wells up in my eye yeah, exactly. every time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like you're such a loser or whatever. But then I go, I go and read, yeah. and it's true. So... And then I get texts at four in the morning, like, <laughs> Mark, did you know? <laughs> I knew. Uh, so, <laughs> Thousand Sons. They were like... The most psychically attuned legion. Yeah. Yeah, like Magnus is like number two. Yeah, I'd say he would be. To like the Emperor, yeah. right? With Malkador being a close third. Yeah. <laughs> I was just waiting for Mark to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason for me to, except for the fact that I want to. Right, exactly. Yeah. It would just be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, fun to shut so it down. Magnus is super powerful psyker. But at this point, like, the warp is known about. Yeah. And everyone knows, like, Everyone knows about the warp because they go into it for warp travel, but no one really knows what's in the warp. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm just learning as I'm reading these books that, like, we all know what chaos and that chaos is in there. But, like, even the Primarchs weren't fully aware. Maybe Magnus knew. Magnus did. Yes, because the Emperor told him, right? Um, So Magnus can go into the warp with, like, a shadow form. Astral projection. Yeah, and, like, he he talked to, like, Chinch. Okay. And the other gods. So Magnus stuff, was aware, but, but like he was aware, the yeah. book that I'm reading, like Horus didn't even know. No. Like he knew there was energy in the warp and it was malevolent, but he mm. didn't know that there was chaos. It ha- he didn't know it had consciousness. Right, yes. So no one really knew about that, but the Emperor did. Um so people treated psychers as like a tool. Right. Yeah. It's just another it's you have a psyker. Someone's oh, job. You're a devastator. Oh, you're a psyker, yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. But then, like, when all of a sudden chaos starts picking up, like, in the Horus Heresy, and, like, warp things start happening, and that's and the Emperor realizes what's going on, he uh, does the Council of Nikea, which is also known as the Trial of Magnus. So they get together for this council, and Magnus goes, because he's called to this uh, meeting, and he sees, like, this beacon of light that the Emperor is transmitting, like him, this astronomicon, isn't it? I believe it is. Yeah, and he like takes it as like a symbol of hope, and he's like, "This is like, I see everything here, and everything is good." Yeah, you know, he's like, "I'm not worried at all." Like the emperor's like got our back on this mm. thing. Like he's a psyker, we're a psyker. Yeah, the emperor's gonna come out and reveal chaos to everybody. Like, tell, yeah, tell everybody about he's it. He's gonna tell everyone the truth about the warp. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. And so we'll be able to like move freely, and we'll take on the force. And what it turns into is a condemning council yeah. where they condemn all psychers and all use of of the warp 
uh, not the warp, but all use of magic from the warp, right? Yeah. There's still sanctioned psychers, like sure. navigators. And astral and pass. Astral pass, and, but... Yeah. But it really, like, what he says is anyone... Uh, so they say... Oh, my gosh. I'm getting this all mixed up. So the end result of the Council of Nikea is they ban the use of psychic at from, like... From the legions. From the legions, yes. Um, and then the emperor says, and this is, like, it's not quoted... It is a quote, but I can't. I don't have the verbatim. So he says, yeah. "Anyone who breaks this is an enemy of mine," mm -hmm. and like you don't make enemies with a man like that. No. So uh, the Thousand Sons, being like a psychic legion, that's all they do. It really, this was just, it was a slap in the face. Not even a slap in the face. This is like you're no longer useful. Yeah, because like they relied so heavily on a lot of their psychic powers that yeah. they were not as skilled as the other legions. Exactly. Like, what's the what's the need to train with a bolt gun yeah. when you train to summon warp flame yeah. and lightning bolts from your fists? Right. Yeah. So they they really felt like it was yeah. aimed at them, and it was. It's called the Trial of Magnus. Yeah. So really, this happens to him, and then in the course of the Horse Heresy, Magnus breaks the law mm -hmm. by. Um, breaking into the wards of the Emperor when he's working on the webway. Yeah, and this is where it gets tragic. Yeah. Because the reason why he breaks into the wards, or into the Emperor's uh, palace, is because he was telling the Emperor that Horus had fallen to chaos. Yeah. Or he was, he was trying to warn him, because this yeah. was the Davin incident. Yeah. Yeah, so Magnus was seeing what was happening to Horus, like, on, in the warp level. Yeah. So Magnus is like, oh my gosh, no. So he breaks through all the psychic wards that the Emperor had placed on Terra, and he goes and tells the Emperor, and the Emperor just goes balls to the walls, and he's furious at him and everything. Yeah. So, And yeah, so not only was he pissed because he just broke the psychic law, he also broke the Emperor's secret project yeah. that he's been working on, and this was like his vision for humanity. So yeah. yeah, basically, in the end of the day, like Magnus was trying to do the right thing, and he got branded but he did the wrong way. Yeah, and then, um, and then what? Didn't something happen to their city? Well, yeah. So then, eventually, Horus, uh, before the treachery, like, tells the Space Wolves to go the burning of Prosper. Yeah. So the Emperor, after the Webway gets destroyed or the Webway project, the Emperor tells Layman Russ to go bring Magnus back to Terra to answer but, for his crime yeah. of breaking the law. But Horus intercepted the message and told Layman Russ to destroy and kill Magnus. Right. So that was kind of the final straw where it's like the, the Space Wolves and Layman Russ, Ru Layman Russ landed on the planet, which was like a beautiful planet full of knowledge and beauty and like they had marble pyramids and fucking wrecked it. Yeah. yeah. They just destroyed Prospero. Yeah. So then that was like, kind of like... Well, not even like... Oh well, that that city's gone. Like that planet blew up at the end. Like yeah. it is no longer there. Like it's a well, lifeless. Husk. So then it's like, if we're already branded as traitors and they want to kill us, like what choice do we have except to fight back yeah. for our own protection? And, and two, even yeah. at that point, it might have even gotten a little past that point where it's like, we tried to help f you. Yeah, it might. At, who knows? Once it, once your yeah. world is destroyed, yeah, right? it might so. have gotten to that point where it's like. But really, like, yeah, Magnus is trying his best. It, it's it's so brutal to hear yeah. about because. Yeah. And then I he, can't wait for you to read the two two books on. Yeah, it. I'm it's, getting pretty excited for because yeah. uh, they do the one where it's uh, I forget what both of them are called, but they do one. One's from the called Space the Burning Wolf. of Prospero. Yeah, and I forget what the other one is, but one is from the Space Wolf's perspective, okay. and then the other one is from the Thousand Suns perspective. So like. You read them back to back, and then gotcha. you kind of get like the, the full over. picture. Yeah, so it's kind of a neat little thing they did. Yeah. But, but yeah, and then Magnus at some point does make a pact with uh, Chinch. And what is kind of sweet about all this is that they give up who they are, and now all the Thousand Suns are just dust inside their armor. It was like to protect them. It was supposed to be to protect them from like the effects of the war. Exactly. But, yeah. yeah. Apparently, like Chief Change changes his well, mind. Yeah. Double crosser. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then just like. But it's cool now because like yeah. they're, they're just, just yeah, they're just dust inside the, their. Yeah. Oh, it's so sweet. It, it's one of those almost like sisters of battle. Like you still not have men under arms or whatever. Where it's like they suffered from the flesh change. Right. So it's like, well, if you're dust, you no longer have flesh. Right. Exactly. <laughs> not quite that gay, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's pretty close. It's it's getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, there, if I was to pick a legion from 30k, I think 30k from 30k. Okay, I think I would choose a thousand suns to be my favorite. I just love psychic powers, I love like their lore. I think I'd choose them, but that's pretty cool. That's a side note, 
yeah it's a good one it's worth it all right nice um let's go to ah the black legion um so we i think we talked quite enough about them during the Horus Heresy. Oh, yeah, episode. I mean, the, so, they are the Horus Heresy Yeah, so if you Legion. need to know, just go look at them. Like, yeah, like, they're, it, that's, like, the Legion that started it all. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, we'd like to dip more into it, but... Yeah, I yeah. think We've nothing all, can be said that we haven't said. Yeah, exactly. Any. Go back and listen to episode eight. Yeah, exactly. Isn't this episode eight? No, this is episode... This is nine. nine. Oh. But technically, it would be episode seven they need to listen to. Oh, yeah. That's oh, the Horus yeah, Heresy. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go listen to our Horus Heresy episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I don't know if you guys talked about I was reading on the Black sure. Legion about Abaddon. Yeah. Have you guys talked about Abaddon yet? A little bit. Okay. And sort of. how, what he was... Uh, um, Abaddon coming forth um, to, uh, like, um, Empress Children. They, like... Um, uh, apparently, they raided, like, um, one of the Black Legion's keeps or whatever i'm not quite sure on the details but they basically like were able fabius bile yeah cloned um made clones of horus yeah which i did not we know haven't about. talked about that okay no. that's but pretty we, crazy we can mention it yeah yeah it's is. crazy and like abaddon was like i'm gonna go destroy all like these clones but horus was like you know reborn and like he's off to like go kill horus it's like crazy yeah, yeah. what what's even crazier about that whole story arc too is that it's rumored that Abaddon is a clone of Horus. Oh, well, he's, no way. Little Horus was always, like, the sons of Horus were always a thing because there were even people within the um, Luna Wolves Legion yeah. that looked very much like oh. Horus. Yeah. Wow. Th- there is that, but it takes it one step for, for further. And, like, Abaddon... Like it's pretty, pretty for sure that is it. It's like one of those Games Workshop things where it's like, yeah, that's what it is, but they're not going to directly come out and say it. I just, it's like in it doesn't matter in what the you book. Think. No, in the book, <laughs> like I'm in the the Mornaval, right? Yeah, yeah. Abaddon is a member of the Mornaval, and so yeah. is a guy named Aximond. Yeah, but Aximond is the one called Little Horus. Yeah, because he was the one that was way more like Horus than anyone else, just in looks. Yeah, but Abaddon like doesn't look like Horus at all. In the way they described it in the book. Maybe they're doing some retcon. Just a different haircut, man. No, I, I don't even think it has been retcon. I think that's, like, from pretty long ago that okay. it's rumored that he's a clone. Yeah, but, okay. That'd but even, cool, even if he's Like a, a clone, clone like killing off the Horus. other clones of, you know, Horus. Like, yeah, that's yeah. a great story. Well, because, once again, Chaos does not want to share power. It makes sense. They're selfish and, yeah. 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 I just... We can get into the clone argument later. Yeah, Anyways, sure. <laughs> uh, the next one is word bearers, but we have talked so much about yeah, the word bearers. Yeah, we know what happened to yeah, them. Yeah, they're the first legion. Yeah. So, yeah, let's go. At, go listen to episode seven, seven, yeah. seven. So. <laughs> yeah. Erebus, cool guy. That was Morgar. great echo effect, uh, Jordan. I love how you that, just, you just that cut that in, in like right away. No, I put like, that in post production. <laughs> okay. How did okay. we hear it? <laughs> Wow, he's Magics. like time warp, Magic. you know, Magic. like he's just time traveling and yeah. wow. Uh, and then the last, but not least, definitely but least. But most convoluted. Alpha Legion. <laughs> the Alpha Legion are crazy. To get the full grasp of them, read Legion. But uh, to get the basic grasp of them, listen to my words, heed my words. <laughs> yes, Mock. <laughs> so... There's this ancient uh, council of different Xenos races in the galaxy. And they see the future and they can, like, they try to correct the galaxy the way it should be. So they seen that the Horus Heresy was about to happen. And uh, they seen what would happen when the Horus Heresy finishes, which is the stagnation of the Imperium and kind of the chaos enduring basically their goal is to get rid of chaos and like tim said earlier the only way to get rid of chaos truly is to wipe out everything to get rid of emotion i'm telling you what they're doing you're giving me a lot i just don't agree with what they are doing (laughs) take it up with them (laughs) so (laughs) they approach um alpharius and alpharius is naturally sneaky like he's the primark who has the least known about him it's a little finger yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> You'd be surprised what he can do with his little finger. Hmm. How would how would you know? Oh, I've been around <laughs> the the Primarchs. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> so they approached him, and they're like, 
you need to fight on the side of Horus in order for Horus to win. And what this will do is if Horus wins, like there will no longer be a stabilizing force in the Imperium. And basically, all life will get wiped out if Horus... Eventually, because Chaos yeah. will win, Chaos will wipe itself out. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, like, Horus will go on a huge crusade, wipe out all the Xenos, and blah, 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 and blah. And then blah, they'll blah. just turn on each other. Yeah, so they tried to swing the balance um, in favor of Horus. So, the Alpha Legion actually are loyal, but not anymore, uh, you most You can't likely. see it, but I am rolling my eyes so hard right yeah, now. Yeah, like... Uh, well, actually, are, okay, loyal... Just the whites of his eyes are just visible now. <laughs> the back of his head at the moment. Actually, oh, they're, they're coming possessed. around now. Okay, there. I'm possessed. Okay. Oh, nope. Now he's aroused. <laughs> Stop looking, Mark. <laughs> but yeah, it's the so... Poke of, uh, loyal... <laughs> it the poke of... The poke of... I want to poke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So loyal, I guess, is not the right word. Um, they were... <laughs> is that a phone call? Yeah, I love it in podcasts when that happens and people are like, "Oh crap! Oh crap!" Like so concerned. It's like, so I would. I'm still gonna listen. That would have been fun. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Um, I the mics might not even even picked it up. Oh. People yeah. will just be like, what? what are you talking about? Well, now you got to edit in a cell phone sound. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, Jordan's someone cell phone just ran. farted, and then we had to throw in, like, a sound of someone's cell it's phone. The I'm looking at the, ma- the Nurgle player for who's farting. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Pestilence happens. So, yeah, that's kind of why they fell. Um, like they, I said, they just you really found wanna... it was, like, the right thing to do for the ga- galaxy. For the galaxy, yeah. yeah. Um, Good interesting. call. Good call, I say. <laughs> anything to chaos is a good call in your i heard yeah. alpha legion guys too they're like because they're so like kind of untainted they look untainted by chaos some of them that they actually like infiltrate into space marine legion they yeah. come across as space marines as well to yeah just like do what they need to do but yeah i have heard that thing. but i have never read it i've seen it you've seen <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. okay uh, a little worried about you there tim <laughs> so those are the the legions um that fell to chaos um, the other thing to note, too, is that throughout the 10,000 years, there have been hundreds of Space Marine chapters that have yeah. also fallen to chaos, who were once loyalists, and then they, you know, got yeah. shafted by the Emperor, and they fell to chaos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing to note is that, um, like, the gene seed purity of chaos legions and Space Marines, like, is not there anymore. So, like, sure, like, Emperor's children... Or it's more common in the Black Legion, let's say. Yeah. So the Black Legion, like, they originally, their gene seed was Horus, but now they don't care. Yeah. Like, really, they just, like, if you're a if you're a dark angel and you want to fall to chaos, like, the Black Legion will accept you. Yeah. And then when you die, they'll they're going to take your gene seed and yeah. use it. And they're just going to put it in another guy. Yeah. So which they, is... still, they still harvest and they still have, like, apothecaries and whatnot. Well, to yeah, do yeah. That, they stole yeah. they stole a thousand gene seed uh, from someone and Fabius Bile helped Blood them. Blood angels, yeah. Blood, yeah, so they stole a thousand <laughs> gene seed. Just from someone. <laughs> someone <laughs> some, thousand some thousand guy just had it in his briefcase. Some random guy. Yeah. No, they stole a thousand gene seed from the Blood Angels and Fabius Bile helped them build like a bunch of new space marines but like they don't mm-hmm. care that where the gene seed comes from yeah right it's more just about like where matching. do your beliefs lie yeah right because that's what matters more to chaos is like that you, yeah. you give your soul over your body doesn't matter yeah mm-hmm. so it's kind of crazy like because yeah they're they take pride in their legion but like some of them probably aren't even from that legion right exactly so. Um, well, the next part of, like, humanity that fell, we're going to talk about is the Dark Mechanicum. Yeah. And they are the, if you haven't guessed... Yeah, yeah. Take a, take a wild stab in the dark at this one. Okay, we'll, we'll go to our noob. What do you think, yeah. Jordan, the Dark Mechanicum are, uh, directly opposed to? Yeah. Directly opposed? Yeah, like... like where do you think they came from? Like, if you... Ha- yeah, yeah. The Dark Mechanicum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are they opposed to the Mechanicum? Oh, oh, wow, you got it! First try, too! Jordan! Like, the, the normal Mechanicum? <laughs> no, but, like, that's exactly it. Oh, okay. like, they were not very, um, I don't know, good with their naming. It's like, <laughs> we were the Mechanicum, but now we're the Dark Mechanicum. <laughs> like, super <laughs> emo. <laughs> They're emo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the emo Mechanicum. You don't understand <laughs> us. We want more STCs. Yeah. And, uh... Nobody understands us. <laughs> oh, I understand. Emperor, <laughs> gosh, just let us make our science. Ugh. <laughs> let us build our robots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. 
um uh. yeah and they uh they basically like turn to the dark mechanicum or like to chaos because they no want no longer want to be restricted by the emperor yeah, they wanted their freedom to, like, no restrictions on their technological advances. Yeah. And, and a lot of it was they were promised STCs. Yeah. Yeah. So they they make up a huge portion of Chaos. Like, they keep all the machines of Chaos running. Yeah. Except for the Nurgles. They don't seem to care if their armor's rotting and falling apart. But, you know. <laughs> or just birthing mouths. Yeah. Out of it, nowhere. It does what it wants. <laughs> <laughs> Self-sustaining. <laughs> But yeah, like they make all the ammunition and stuff and do whatever they need to do. And they, the other crazy thing that they do is um, demons, Yeah, they graft demons to machines and make demon engines. And, demon engines. And what this does is it's, it, it's beneficial for two people because the Mechanicum, they get to build something. Yeah. No, they love building stuff. They love building. <laughs> yeah. And the demon is able to then stay in the materium. Yeah. It's longer. an anchor yeah. is what it is. So yeah. I believe we I I believe I mentioned soul grinders before. Yeah. In our yeah, warp it, episode. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Like it's just this massive like a like eight leg. It, it's it's like a centaur, but the bottom half is mechanical spider, and the top half is massive demon. Top yeah. half. The top. I just got really excited. Top <laughs> half. This is the top half, guys. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, it, it looks really cool, but it, yeah. it it also has a practical effect. Yeah. Because it does anchor the demon to the materium. Yeah. So it has a very very useful thing. Does the, the demon, demon want to be there? Absolutely. Yeah. I thought they're trying to escape these war engines and like. Okay, so you're thinking more of possessed vehicles uh, as opposed to. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be, was... There's a difference between being binded to yeah. a machine okay. and then. Uh, willingly joining graciously right. invited into graciously this invited. soul yes. grinder okay yeah. graciously <laughs> <laughs> yeah so let, so let's talk it's like an airbnb <laughs> for damon it's, it's like, like oh this like, one looks nice yeah yeah the mechanicum is like building it and they're like who do we want to send this invite out to like oh i hear that one's good <laughs> so let's talk about demon possession Okay. Uh, well, vehicles. Yeah, well it's the mechanic it's the dark mechanicum version of the machine spirit. Yeah. So and we did kind of touch on how like the machine spirit is like the mechanicum's way of getting around AI. Yeah, yeah. So like they're no longer allowed AI, but no, we've created the machine spirit. Yeah. Which is an AI. Essentially. Yeah. Not as powerful yeah. as like a full functioning AI, but it's still AI. So you know it's crazy too. So like mechanicum the dark mechanicum yeah. can, can do whatever they want. Yet they still haven't made an AI. I know. I was just thinking about that. Like they still haven't reverted back to the Men of Iron. No, and maybe oh, so AI was uh... Age of Strife, wasn't it? It was banished then. Yeah. Oh yeah. I they invented it during like the Dark Age of Technology. Or something, yeah. Right. And then, but I don't know what happened. After so that. then there it, was like they, the dark. Those AI like set the galaxy aflame. Oh, that's like, fantastic. And like the <laughs> Xenos even had to like deal with it. Like everything. That's so funny. It's funny. Like in our actual world, like yeah. people are so fearful of AI, and even in Warhammer Forty Thousand, it's yeah. like like they yeah, almost not a good destroyed. Idea. <laughs> they almost destroyed the galaxy. Okay, yeah. so like things like inservators and stuff. That's how they get that's around. That's the machine it. spirit. No, not... a, a servitor is part human. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So they get around okay. the fact that nothing is purely machine but anymore. But pure machine. Yeah. They temper it with humanity. Yeah, they, they use the brain as a processor. Yeah. Maybe opposed. that is the answer to destroying chaos. Reintroduce artificial intelligence. Machine. Well, I guess that's Necron. So never mind. We'll, okay, we'll I'm, I'm too many rabbit trails. <laughs> <laughs> Take us with you. <laughs> but yeah, they. they so it, what chaos does is they just build a land raider. Uh, sorry, the Dark Mechanicum builds a Land Raider, and then they just get a demon to possess the vehicle. Okay, so they that's yeah. then they bind it to yeah yeah, and and normally that's not as willing no, because mm -hmm. um, you you're stuck to the machine like right you, yeah, it's not as good as like being grafted to a machine. He wants to be in the Soul Grinder, yeah, or you know exactly. he kind of got shafted there, yeah. yeah, yeah, and you just. Yeah. The invitations got stuffed. mixed up. You're, you're getting stuffed full of space marines every day in and day All out. All the nerglings. Yeah. You're like a demon of Slanesh or something Yeah, in like the Land Raider, but there's like a bunch of like Death Guard in there. It's just <laughs> gross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. All that, you know, yeah. perfectly machined. Uh, you know. Yeah. And I guess we did really talk. We talked about the tech advancement, but... Um, like you think about it, yeah. They, even though they are now free to do whatever they want, yeah, it is interesting to know that, that they haven't made some more technological jumps. Yeah, like AI must just be so hard to crack. Yeah, that 
they're also after like all these like uh, artifacts from like the old yeah. era of like the dark Age ancient of yeah yeah like trying to like uncover super more super weapons or yeah stuff like anything that. from a very good combat blade to a star destroying sun <laughs> oh yeah, yeah we got a good one later <laughs> yeah um yeah but so the dark mechanic is just another part another faction of humanity that fell mm -hmm. and then everything else in humanity so everything that isn't a an astartes mm -hmm. or a member of the mechanicum is lumped in together and they are called the lost and the damned yeah so that's any kind of mortal human that from fell a mutant chaos. from like a beastman to a yeah. human to an ogryn yeah everything anything. yeah and uh like they make up the majority of like cults and like the heretic yeah. her heretics yeah. i was thinking hereticus <laughs> And where there might only be a million heretic Astartes, yeah. there could be Billions, trillions. Yeah. Like, this is where the true force of chaos lies. Yeah. Um, it's in all those lost and the damned that are worshipping chaos. Yeah. And uh, wow. this can go, like, they have, like, entire Imperial Guard reg regiments who fall to chaos. Yep. And they have yeah cultists that spring up and might not even be worshiping chaos to begin with but then eventually they like you know they get manipulated into worshiping chaos or forced into it or whatever um they, they dabble too much they dabble too they much dab with too much yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh oh boy they dab too much with something they don't know kids out there listen pay heed. <laughs> Stop dabbing! Just go around <laughs> smacking everyone dabbing. Like, you're worshipping chaos! <laughs> and yeah, they're usually the guys, cultists are usually the guys that are, like, summoning demons on planets and really getting the ball of chaos rolling. Yeah. They're the uh, the initial uh, foothold. Or, yeah, there's just so many of them. Yeah. And you can never truly root them out, because you can never really know someone's mind until they, like, commit the act. So right. you could have, like, for all we know, there's heretics in this room. <laughs> Tim, there's one for sure. <laughs> there's, for all we know, there's that. more than one heretic in this room, right? Until somebody Jordan. claims no, that they're a heretic. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. Right. And that's because you never know the workings of the mind. Exactly. Um, and yeah, like uh, the one cool uh, uh, regiment, Imperial Guard regiment, is called the Blood Pact. Okay. And where most chaos is just like crazy, like. They just do whatever they want, and they're, you know, they could... It's more of a mass. Yeah, and, like, they could go... They have a, a rifle, but instead they used to use... Or they decide to use it as, like, a club. Yeah. Like, they're just... They're chaos. Like, they're not organized. Right. But the blood, blood pact is, like, super organized, and it, it's kind of cool. So they, they kind of function as a regiment who yeah. just believes in chaos. Yeah. Hmm. And it... Yeah. Because so like, there can be order within chaos. Yeah, yeah, there is. And, like... You better believe that the the legions they're they're being tactic like they're using tactics and stuff most of them unless you're world eaters unless you're world eaters but like <laughs> i like to think too that like there is still tactics being used and it's not just run for it and try to kill everybody like right so this regiment i like just because it's hmm. they very regimented yeah 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 yet they still believe in chaos right. and they worship corn of all things wow Oh, that is kind of interesting. You'd yeah. think it was a little more like a zinch or something. Yeah, no, but they worship corn. And it's just like a unique take on them. Right. So. Hmm. Anything with, with that's unique is kind of nice. Yeah. All right, so those are like the three main... Well, those are the three parts of humanity that fell to chaos. And yeah. for the past, uh, I think it took a couple hundred years for the loyalists really to push everything uh, after... Uh, push everything back to like the fringes or at least or, contain it yeah like kind of feel that they've claimed something back because chaos like made so many planets fall and the the, the imperium had to go reclaim all those planets yeah. from them um but after that's kind of happened there's a little bit of like a, a breath right the imperium like finally takes a breath <sighs> and now like <laughs> They, they look around. They start the ecclesiarchy <laughs> oh, thing. You know, yeah. Van Dyer happens. Uh, Armageddon happens at, at that point, doesn't it? Is there not another Armageddon that happens? Oh, there's a bunch of Armageddon. There's like three yeah. Armageddons or there four is Armageddons. Three. Yeah. But three, so the, yeah. um, the, the Imperium then has a bunch of stuff it's dealing with. And in the course of this, um, chaos is constantly assaulting the galaxy. Yeah. Um, the Probably the most important things that happen are almost always led by abaddon yeah so after horus is so it's funny yeah go on yeah no no, no. say your thought it so it's funny like yeah it's always abaddon and his black crusades yeah 
But like he's not you, the most powerful. No, when you look at the damage he did, like it wasn't the most. Like there's reason. Yeah, there is reason in his madness. There is, I know. Yeah, but it just initially you don't see it. No, you never do. Like you never, you never see it coming. Yeah. Let's be honest. But yeah, so chaos would go on what they call black crusades. And, and it really is just any time, like, a chaos is deciding to assault the mature world, it's a black yeah. crusade. Yeah, it's a chaos incursion. Right, yeah. Like, so, think of crusades. Right, okay. Think. I'm thinking about it. I got it in my okay. brain. Then think of evil crusades, but instead of evil, replace the word with black. Oh, my gosh. So, oh, Mind <laughs> fucking blown. So, it's a bad thing, right? <laughs> not for chaos. Not for yeah, me. Not for you. Yeah. yeah, bad for you guys. Yeah. Okay. Right. But like okay. Eric was saying, the most... Uh, well known uh what is abaddon's black crusades and it's it's chaos uniting for a single purpose yeah like abaddon will call a black crusade yeah, it's just like family reunion that's really what <laughs> that's honestly all that they are you know it's like hey guys every couple hundred years are gonna get together again you know yeah. we'll see your so crazy it just starts and, off as like yeah. you're just drinking with your buddies exactly <laughs> but then you end up blowing you up you happen planet. to destroy we had an some all night bender and we're okay. so sorry <laughs> we're just gonna go back to the eye of terror and uh <laughs> forget we came out <laughs> yeah we, we were actually, when Mark and I were planning out the episode, we started to list all the... Um, all of his crusades. Yeah, the 12 ones. Well, he does 13. Yeah. But we started to list the 12 because we were like, we're only going to talk about 12. And we were putting like the dates and the timelines to them. And Mark kind of pointed out to me that like, yeah, they happen over the course of 10,000 or like 8,000 years from like the first to the last. But in reality, for the Black Legion, that could only be like 200 years. Yeah, and like they're mm. super sporadic. Like, so some were a hundred years apart. Some, some were even less than that. Yeah, and like, so, th so think about being like a, a citizen human. on Cadia, right? Because Cadia is very commonly the first planet assaulted in any Black Crusade because it's right on the edge of the Eye of Terror. The only stable way in and out of the Eye of Terror, right? Um, and yeah, just imagine like you've heard these tales of like the star gods actually they're more intelligent kadia yeah, knows kadia knows kadia knows but like you hear these like chaos space marines who come to your planet and like thousands of years ago they did this and it's really like yeah it's yeah, never it's, gonna happen again yeah. you think it's never gonna happen again until it does right and it's yeah. so sporadic and like, like yeah the humans on that world they are screwed yeah. but like it's the same it's abaddon over and over and for him it could be like we lost all right we go back and then two years later they try again, but really, eight hundred years has passed just due to the way the war works. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it is, it's, it's really it's, neat to it's think. It's a cool about. thought. Yeah, hmm. that to Abaddon, like to him, it's just been like a continual war effort. Nonstop. Yeah, but for yeah. like humanity, like they are sent reeling every time he comes, and they barely mm -hmm. prepare. And, yeah, wow. it's kind of cool. But yeah. he leads like the most successful, uh, maybe not the most successful, but the most impactful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ones. most touching. Yeah, most touching. <laughs> most yeah. special. Ones. Yeah. yeah, it's odd. And odd. like we will go into the Black Crusades. We were we were setting it all together, and then we realized like, oh my gosh, this is way too much to put into one episode. <laughs> yeah. So we had plan we had talked about like half of them, and we scratched it all. Well, and the first six are like they assault Cadia. Yeah, yeah. Next Black Crusade, they assault Cadia. Next Black Crusade, <laughs> guess what they do? They assault Cadia as a distraction. Oh no! <laughs> but then they go assault a different planet. Oh. But Cadia is still being assaulted. Yeah, yeah. You know? So we're just like, ah, yeah. we'll talk about another Probably time. the coolest one, though, um, was not the coolest one, but one that is kind of cool, though, is the very first Black Crusade, Abaddon gets Drechnia. Yeah. Which is his sword. Yeah, his demon sword. Yeah, it's a demon sword. So he, like, I don't even know the full story of, like, whether he subdues the demon or he puts the demon in or if he finds the sword or whatever but he somehow ends up with his like massive demon sword which Whoa. is cool but what's Crazy. cool about this demon sword is the demon it it was born during humanity's first murder which would be i don't think they specifically say but cain and abel Whoa. you could say cain and abel if you want to be yeah. i do i do want to be i, I do want to be biblical sure you do you <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, the crazy thing is, yeah. But this is born it, during it, humanity's it's, first murder. It's before from that were, incident. Yeah, it's before <laughs> there were even chaos gods. <laughs> What's it because there have been demons in the warp forever. Yeah. Yeah. But, but this is before there was even chaos gods. Like hmm. this demon was born. Yeah. Pretty wow. pretty neat. Wow. It is pretty um, cool. My favorite one, I think it's the seventh or the eighth. Okay. I, I forget. Um, but it is they land on a planet and it's full of orcs. 
and they take all these orcs and they just start to do testing on them to see like their relationship to the warp ah like green skin so, experiments yeah like to me that would make a neat book because it would really have give you the opportunity to expand on orcs orcs and how they actually yeah. interact with the warp because it's kind of always they got their psychic wall or do they yeah like, is it warp related or is it just psychic yeah, yeah. so yeah. i think that'd be a neat book to kind of it would give you that opportunity to further explain expand on that could it. be pretty cool yeah it's just different than they destroyed this planet. Than they, destroyed they assaulted Cadia. Yeah. <laughs> then they assaulted Cadia. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Isn't the um like his crusades right? Or re- I'm trying to remember because there, I think was his thirteenth one was the last one. Yeah. And wasn't that determined by real, um, actual like, uh, people playing? Yeah. Right. So, so which is crazy that like it, real people in playing the game. Is actually determined like, they're the determining lore, lore yeah. in the Warhammer universe based on the roll of the dice. Yeah, <laughs> which it always fucks them over every time they do it. <laughs> it's funny. So, um, like the Thirteenth Black Crusade has been retconned, I think, three times. Um, they keep going back and redoing it and changing and tweaking it. Hmm. But so they originally did that whole player campaign, and what ended up happening was uh, Abaddon took Cadia and. They they like had the whole campaign where they did like Cadia, they did Battlefeet Gothic. So Abaddon took Cadia and had the surface of the planet, but the Imperials they won Battlefeet Gothic. They won the space around the planet. So they oh, could just destroy the planet. Exactly. So then yeah. they had to. So they went with it for a bit, but then yeah. they had to retcon it. Like when they decided to go, oh, we're going to do a 14th Black Crusade. No, we're just going to retcon what they did in the 13th. God. And but, so they always start with Battlefleet Gothic, and then they move on to. It doesn't sound like tabletop it. or. It sounds like they happen simultaneously. Yeah, it can, oh. yeah, it happened simultaneously. And I'm I'm actually not too sure if it they did do Battlefleet Gothic or if they just played 40k, but every map that they did was like in a spaceship. You know, gotcha. like I'm not sure how they actually did it, but the outcome remains that it, it, it is kind of cool though. It is that like the. I, sorry, go go ahead. It. Oh. I was going to say, right, we should all be playing Battlefleet Gothic because that has greater consequences. consequences. Like, it really that's does. crazy, you know? Yeah. It's like... Well, then uh, I'm definitely playing as Black Templar because Helbridge is an amazing, like, space tactician. Yeah. Yeah, he is. And that would probably make me a better player, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, lorically it would. Or, yeah, that makes sense. Lorically, I like that word. Um, there, lorically. <clears throat> there's a, a couple other... Um, kind of like just things Chaos does like in the course of this thing that are unrelated to the Astartes that I wanted to talk about. Can unless, I, yeah, yeah, I got something couple, else. Yeah, so um, I'm going to mention a couple other Black Crusades oh, okay. but not related to Abaddon. Okay, sure. And this one is the one that I think is the craziest. Sure. So Angron, Mr. Angerman himself, busts out of the warp with 50,000 World Eater Berserkers by his side. And what he does is he rampages and he destroys, uh, I think it's 10 sectors of space. That's huge. So when you think wow. of, K- like, Abaddon's like, mm, mm, Kadia, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got a foothold on Kadia. It's like, man, you ain't done crap. Like, go talk to Abaddon. He just destroyed, Angron. like, a- or Angron. You just destroyed <laughs> hundreds of worlds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, to me, that's scary. That's dangerous. Um, and the... Uh, the only way he was able to get defeated was there was a hundred Grey Knight Terminators that had to banish him, like because he's a demon. He's so, a demon prince. Yeah. yeah so uh, demon prime. Demon Primarch. So they they knew the banishing rights, but like not a lot of them survived. Jeez. But after ten se- sectors are destroyed, yeah. like that's uh-huh. chaos. That's scary. Do you know what blows my mind about forty k is how many worlds are actually habitable <laughs> like, there's a lot well, <laughs> we're like here we're like hello <laughs> like, they're like oh we got like people living on the moon we got people oh and jupiter and well they can terraform it's crazy that, that is the oh thing. yeah that's so right. they yeah. they humanity, they're changing the planets yeah. so yeah. they can live on humanity can terraform and well so can the eldar eldar can or the old really ones care. did like there are quite a few races who have been terraforming the galaxy yeah but okay, I, I agree okay. like yeah 
but also like the it, scale of yeah, it. Yeah, it sets so the big. scale of 40k because yeah. it's like like you read 40k and it's like and millions died here and like 10 billion people died here. It's just yeah, the scale is like how many people in this galaxy? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's a good segue to another thing I would like to talk about. Um, I don't mean to steal the line. Bring it from, home, Mark. Uh, the siege of Verax. And uh, just to give you a scale of just one planetary battle, what was happening? No, I'm just upset that you're going outside of my timeline, but that's fine. Well, it just happened to be the perfect segue. Did it? Because yeah, I, we pretty, were talking about okay. numbers, and then I had to look up on my phone, and now we're talking and rambling and waiting. Well, we're it was waiting flowing, for your phone. Eric, and you just I killed would, the flow. I did not kill the flow. It's your gestures. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> your rude Your visual gestures. gestures. <laughs> so th- this battle... On just one planet, um, the casualties for the Imperium were 14 million Imperial Guardsmen. Just one, one, one planet. One planet. Yep. Hmm. Um, hundreds of Space Marines, four Inquisitors, nine Titans. And then the casualties for Chaos was significant in the millions. Who, who knows what that means? But yeah. if they lost and the Imperium lost 14 million, yeah. you'd think Chaos would lose a lot more than that. Yeah, exactly. So it just that's and that's one planet. Yeah, and that's the scale of forty k. Just millions die, and it's like, well, and it does. I thought the planet was permanently yeah. lost to chaos. Yeah, it was. Okay, and it was because a, a cardinal on that planet turned to chaos, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and they oh quar- they quarantined, but the planet's quarantined. Does that mean like just they don't let anyone go on there, or they just like? D- do, they do something to the planet where people can't live I don't understand anymore. why they don't just lance stuff like that. Yeah. Like, it's unfortunate that you, 2% of the population are loyal, but your death serves a higher purpose. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure what they mean exactly by quarantine. Yeah. Maybe they're hoping that they just quarantine them, chaos destroys itself on that planet, then they, they can, can take it, it back. It, and, it might be rich with resources yeah, Exactly. So. Uh, okay. So. Um, okay, so something I wanted to talk about now. Yeah. It's my turn. Mark. Is it my turn? You gotta wait for a segue, and that sir was not a good segue. Oh, dang wait, it. wait your turn. Okay, yeah, go for it. <laughs> uh, this is it's called Wrath of the Chaos Sun, and this happens year ten M thirty seven, and what happens is a star explodes in warp flame. So like chaos is like manipulating it somehow, and the star not just, just regular flame. No, not regular flame. Warp flame. Uh, what happens? is every planet for a hundred light years surrounding this thing gets washed in this warp flame which causes all the people on it either to be killed mutated or demon possessed (laughs) wow and that's why little timmy don't try to summon demons in your basement (laughs) you might explode your star in warp flame but how's how crazy is that just like this oh it's wild yeah a hundred light years radius around it and that's why once and again i look at abaddon and it's like man like chaos is like yeah chaos is dangerous everyone makes a big deal about like the astartes because they're the astartes yeah and the black crusades and everything but really like Chaos is doing other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And having way more devastating effects. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another one I wanted to talk about. You say, like, chaos is the most devastating force in the 40k universe. Like, if you were to compile just all the, the scale gods, of what they do, all the gods yeah. together? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Who, yeah. who else would oh, so, choose their so body my, count? So, my only thought would be Tyranids, but the time scale difference, it's hard to compare. 100 years of Tyranid invasion to 10,000 years. So sure. who knows? We might in another 100 years wipe out Tyranids, in which case, you know, obviously Chaos has had a greater toll. Or Tyranids sweep the galaxy. Or Tyranids could sweep. So that's my yeah. only cry. But no, I would agree as of right now, yeah, Chaos is way more deadly. Yeah. The ball is good. Yeah. Good. 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 Okay. Good. 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 Uh, one more I wanted to talk about is called the Occlusiad. And I was going to insert that Emperor Palpatine. Uh, Google. Yes. <laughs> Jordan it. will get on it. Listeners, if you could Google that right now, um, <laughs> you can fully understand this reference. <laughs> I'm dying, Anakin. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, you. <laughs> you have to do those hand motions at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Star Wars podcast? Star, Star Wars podcast? Oh, yeah. Star, okay. Star Wars? <laughs> Same time next week. Uh, I, I'm a sucker for anything um, that has to do with, like, like the religious aspect of 40K. 
Um, mm. So, like, this is called the Ecclusiad. It happened in the year 555 of M37. And uh, what happens is a cult of heretics, they found an artifact from the dark age of technology that turns ordinary stars into supernova. <laughs> Like they just they just point this weapon at a star, and it <laughs> turns it into like one of the most powerful reactive bombs in the universe, and they destroy the outer rim on the Segmentum Obscurus for ten years Jeez. before they're defeated. So, like the, maybe we haven't really discussed the scale of something that happens. So you have the entire galaxy, the entire Milky Way galaxy, which is a swirl galaxy, yeah. has been broken up on Imperial maps into five segments. I thought four. Five. Is there's, it five? There's one right in the center. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And there's the yeah. four around. Okay, you're right. So it's broken up into five segmentums, and then these segmentums are broken up into sectors, and then the sectors are broken up into star systems, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Mm, pretty so sure. a segmentum is one-fifth of the galaxy, and oh our galaxy has billions and billions and billions. Have you guys seen that Donald Trump video where it's just billions, goes, yeah. billions, <laughs> and billions and billions, and it's literally like for five minutes long? I like the ones where he's saying China over and over. <laughs> China, 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 China. 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 <laughs> Anyways, but there's billions of stars in yeah. this galaxy. And they destroy the outer rim of the Segmentum Obscurus. Like, they don't Oof. give a number to how many it is, but... You can imagine it's going to be thousands of, st of stars. Yeah. And when you destroy a star, that destroys a multitude of planets. Yeah. And, oh, it's Whether just... due to, like, the actual supernova or just losing the sun. Oh, losing the sun, yeah. If the losing exactly. the sun is enough. You're but, screwed. Yeah. So, like, even oh. these cultists do more than Abaddon on Cadia. You right? They're just, they're just cultists. And people, they're just people, and they just called corrupted, corrupted, and they found a weapon. Yeah. People. yeah. Yeah, they're just regular people lost in the damned. Yeah. Just lost. Just yeah. lost. They're just <laughs> lost souls. Yeah. But they're called the Ecclusi like that whole thing was called the Ecclusiad. And it's just it was so cool to me. Hmm. Who stopped it? Oh, I don't remember. I think it required like a bunch I'm of gonna different say people. That they probably blew themselves up. <laughs> no, they didn't. No, they no. didn't. Oh, okay. no! It, it, it took like, like a... <laughs> just just imagine. Some... No, that's our star system. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like just picture the Dawn of War uh, cultists, and they're like, "Yes!" <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're like just imagine that guy having okay, the power yeah, to destroy, okay. to destroy stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I wish I knew some more of his quotes, but they're pretty funny. <laughs> I, I think like the Grey Knights were involved, um, but I'm pretty sure it took like a decent sized like force of people together to yeah. destroy them so they were tech priests or the guy leading it was a tech priest was he oh, okay yeah called the blind king um yeah he uncovered the artifact in the lost uh, in the age of uh no the artifact was lost in the dark age of right yeah it was from there yeah but i don't know who put an end to that crazy mm. thing but yeah. it was yeah some it's pretty crazy ancient tech relic guys. yeah yeah, yeah. like <laughs> I'm sure I could find it if I absolutely had to, guys. That's fine. Okay, good, because I don't really want to do that. I uh, <clears throat> I learned about an interesting cult today, actually, ah, at work. At, at work? At Mark, work. What are you, uh, what are you doing at work? <laughs> Just listen to the podcast. Not, not working. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so um, Independent Characters had on John French, who wrote a new book that came out a couple months ago, and they're interviewing him. And... They, they weren't super specific on the details, so I got to go home and read a little bit more about it. But this cult, um, while they are a cult and they do serve chaos, they, well, they don't even serve chaos, actually. They just want the death of the emperor okay. so that the emperor will be reborn. So while they are a cult, mm. they they take it to extremes. Sure. And, uh, yeah, like, they they had devastating effects on things like even though they were you know pulling an alpha legion and were loyal to the emperor by trying to kill right him. their goal is for the greater the good of mankind yeah their means are not so good right so i i did find out how they lost and like really it was just nothing like should just, i strap in no oh. no it is nothing great <laughs> someone just lance batteried their ship i'm telling you man they blew themselves up no no the, the weapon I is like actually story. That's yeah well that's what we're going with <laughs> no the weapon is in a i don't vault care if christian Mars. needs facts <laughs> I don't care either. Screw it. They killed themselves. <laughs> Blew themselves up. But the weapon is in Mars. Oh, neat. 
It was just kind of I don't cool. know how Mars would have got it from the explosion of the cultists, but yeah, Mars are crafty like that. Yeah, they're, Martians they're, are crafty. They got their <laughs> little finger, their techno fingers and everything. <laughs> so they recovered the weapon. Yeah, the weapon, the weapon was recovered. Crazy. Uh. Yeah. Um, I guess one of the last things we're going to chat about, um, not the last thing that happened, but one of the last things we're going to chat about is the Badab War. Yeah, so this is just a good example of loyalist chapters falling to chaos. Um, Because this happens many times over 10,000 years. Uh, But basically, there's a uh, Astro Claus chapter, and their leader had a planet. And it first started off like they raised the taxes of the planet. And then they got, you know, a little more greedy. And then they weren't paying their taxes to the Imperium. They were holding some for themselves. Yeah, so then a bunch of chapters were sent to go deal with him. But then he talked a bunch of chapters into chaos with him, and it turned into this huge thing involving like 15 chapters or something like that yeah and devastated like and like an entire sector or something devastated devastated <laughs> yeah like a tater I, yeah i was just thinking like are you talking about a guy with like a heavy bolter or are you talking no, a heavy about the tater actual gun. devastator i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i don't know Words. anything <laughs> or i can't read <laughs> um, yeah and it just shows that like uh like loyalists still can fall to chaos oh it's too. insidious yeah like right? it everyone, just started everyone as has that mental chink yeah. in their armor yeah it just started as small small tax creep and then eventually it led into him taking five chapters to chaos with it yeah. and that so, would be five thousand yeah her and blackheart her on blackheart or uh i think he changed his name too but isn't it really Oh, I thought I he always did. knew him as that, Huron. That's his chaos name, isn't it? Huron Black. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's his chaos oh, name. Yeah, that's I his, chaos his loyalist name. name. Um, but yeah, it's it's a whole big thing. He's got the flamers. One, yeah. In the hand, right? He also has like, uh, yeah, one in the hand. And then he also has like this weird like psychic cat creature thing or something like that. Well, don't make he this was weird, Mark. It's not about your fetishes. Luft, g- Luft oh, yeah. Huron? Yeah, yeah. Like a really weird name. L-U-F-G-T. Luft. <laughs> Luft. <laughs> Luft. <laughs> Keep trying, guys. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> you have a little chunk of information, anything interesting in there about the Badab War you want to mention? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so, like, he pulled a bunch of, um, like, chapters with him, right? Yeah. Some of them who went with him were actually, um, like, pardoned. Yeah. On the like condition the they lamenters? go. Yeah, Lamenters, Warriors, Executioners, oh, yeah. the Mantis Warriors. But uh, they had to do, like, a penitent crusade. Yeah. Um, yeah. And... That's actually a pretty common theme. It yeah. is. A but penitent it's crusade. cool. I don't think we've ever mentioned it, but... Okay. Yeah, go on. So what they, what did the crusade have to do? Oh, no, that's... Uh, if you want to keep... Uh, talk more about the penitent crusade. It doesn't say... Uh, oh, okay. I didn't have in my notes specifically of what they did. I, I think they sent some of them for, to... For what, you know... <laughs> atoning for their sins right yeah it, it's kind of a cool idea it's like if um and a lot of it is self-imposed yeah like some of them were like we are gonna go on a crusade and not uh recruit another space marine for a hundred years so a hundred years of war without recruiting that's huge. And it's like if we dry. survive yeah then we have yeah. done our thing but it's like we failed yeah. to do this like we need to regain our honor or we need yeah. to like uh, prove that we're still the you yeah. know the emperor's chosen so yeah it's kind of they, they impose this punishment upon themselves yeah. sometimes sometimes it's yeah and but there's been like a lot of crazy things that have happened in the imperium itself yeah like which roboot wakes up and is like oh my god what have you done <laughs> yeah. uh i think of all the quotes his like waking up quote is my favorite which is um Keep talking, I'll find it. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't really know if I have anything else on chaos. Is there, was there anything else you wanted to mention about, like, the, just the lost and the damned or anything? Um, Tim? it's all good stuff. It's, yeah. it's all good stuff? You like it? People, if you're interested in chaos, I... He highly recommends. You know, <laughs> get, I, get into it. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I got that quote. Okay. Why do I still live? What more do you want from me? I gave everything I had to you, to them. Look at what they've made of our dream. This bloated, rocking, rotting carcass of an empire is driven not by reason and hope, but by fear. Hate and ignorance. Better that we had all burned in the fires of Horace's ambitions than live to see this. Nihilism much. <laughs> That's a, it's a sweet quote. It like, is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so in the book I was just reading, like, and literally I, I've read the first book. But there is a, a remembrancer 
um, and he's going through this world that they just uh, got compliance on, and they call compliance like when they bring a, a member of humanity back into the fold. Yeah. And normally, like you have to, like if the ruling class accepts it, great, they accept it. If they don't, well, you kill them all. Yeah. Right. So they they had just fought this war uh, for compliance, and this one guy is going around looking at all the destruction, and he's like, these guys built this empire, thinking it was going to last forever, but it failed. Because someone came along and tore it down. And, and in his brain, he's like, that's just what humanity does. You build up, someone tears down. You build up, someone yeah. tears down. Mm-hmm. And he's like, can't you see that this is what our empire is going to yeah. do? Their empire was no better than ours. Like, yeah, he's like, they they also assumed that they were the best. Yeah. Like, what makes us so different? So it mm-hmm. was it was kind of a cool thing that like and that's way back in the day. That's when Horus had that's just after Ulanor when Horus had just been named War Master. <laughs> I thought you were talking about like our world for a second because it was like <laughs> made well, so both. much sense. So I was like, oh yeah, like Aztecs, Mayans, <laughs> Egyptians. Well, no, it, I was like, oh wait, you're very, talking. But yeah, I was theme. just gonna say it's an actual like like Rome, even literally even nature yeah, like, forest fires they yeah. like it's it's, it's it a, has to happen right. for a forest to thrive because you need that you need the space and you so, need space for stuff to grow so chaos is the good guys oh my god that <laughs> we can just end the podcast now that's that's uh that's your take-home thought for the day folks Jeez. love it i got i got one more thing to All mention right, one more um about the chaos navy well, me and Christian got his huge argument about it, and now he's not here to defend himself. Oh, perfect. That's my favorite. Yeah, James. yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's shit all over him. <laughs> we, we got into this huge argument about, um, like, chaos and spaceships. And, like, oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And, like, to me, a lot of the chaos space mer- spaceships are led by heretic Astartes. Because, once again, heretic Astartes, they want that power. They're not going to be giving out that power to... Guard path. Yeah. Um, where in the Imperium, like the Imperial Navy is a separate thing from even the Imperial Guard yeah. and the uh, Heretic or and the uh, Astartes. Yeah. I get tongue tied a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's funny but, if you know me and people are like, what? But you it's podcast? sad if you You're don't because you think he just has like issues and problems. <laughs> you guys can't see, but I have a, a, a little twitch. A little twitch. A little bit of twitch. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I like to think that most of the Heretic ships are piloted by chaos of Stardis. but there's no proof of that or yeah there's whatever. no one way or the other no. like what was his me, argument or christian just said like obviously they have astropaths because why would a space it, no no we were we were never arguing over astropaths we we're order arguing over oh, captaincy like who, who commands the ship because yeah. obviously mm-hmm. they need astropaths even though they're through the warp through the warp they still need to be able yeah. to be guided through i'm just trying to rationalize that in my head don't astropaths view the light of the astronomicon yeah but how could a chaos astropath view the light of the astronomicon. Just mm. the light. It's yeah, not... but you have to be blessed so by they the still use in order it? to see it. Oh. Well, they have a chaos uh, Geller field. <laughs> well, no, everyone has a Geller field. <laughs> no, but a chaos Geller field. <laughs> no, you, but you, I, know, you know like, what? You know what? Um, actually, like many chaos warbands, they literally, like, a lot of them are like pirating warbands too. Right. So they will literally plunge into the warp and wherever it spits them out, they'll like, they think yeah, it's like true. the chaos gods who are like, blessing them it's like this is where we have to go so they'll literally like they go in and then they got spit out on some place Hmm. they'll raid it and they'd pop back in so they might not even be using guidance in the warp they just they just jump in and they're like wherever we go that's where we hit up next so i know that that's one thing that a lot of war bands do so yeah i think that would probably be the most common thing now, now thinking about it, you guys are right. Like they're not looking at the light of the astronomicon, and <laughs> yeah, it's possible that like an astral path could fall to chaos, and that yeah. one would be able to see the light of the astral. Yeah, and like, but yeah. no, no one who's a human who like wants to become an astral path, they wouldn't be able to see yeah. the light. I wish Games Workshop did a little more with astral paths and navigator houses, like the Navis Snowbleat. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of cool. Hopefully, like they're just now doing like the Siege of Terror, right? Uh, well, that's what they say, but could be another fifteen years. Right, you never know. You never know. Yeah, because after that, like they could do the ruling, like the high lords. Yeah, right, so. and the forming of the Inquisition and all that stuff. Yeah, so. but yeah. Oh boy, that's a lot of talk on on like chaos. Yeah. <laughs> so the big thing to take away is it's not just legions. Yeah. They also have the backing of the Dark Mechanicum. Yeah. They also have billions of cultists, and they 
go on black crusades and they just wreck stuff they explode stars they, they swallow systems yeah. they appear out of nowhere they're insidious chaos is just always fighting yeah always growing yeah okay and at that point let's um dive straight in to our next section where i'm just going to pose questions to you guys so question number one right off the bat um why do you think that demon primarchs have hitherto stayed in the warp yeah that one i'm not even sure about there are a couple that do come out right well we mentioned you mentioned angron yeah and i found a number for how many sectors he did yeah 70 <laughs> 70 <laughs> sectors jeez how many star systems that's so many right like yeah it's huge. But but I'm for Angron, he, he like no one else has really done a whole bunch. Yeah. Like um uh what's his name? Logar? Yeah. Like what has he done? Right. He like, hasn't when, done... when was the last time Perturabo came out? Yeah, exactly. So I don't know what they're doing. Um some are would be pretty easy to say what they're doing. Right. Go Fulgrim. On. Right. What what's do you think he... he's doing? I don't wanna know. He's getting poked by Slavic. <laughs> <laughs> like, that one's easy. No, like, it's an easy one. Yeah, like, that one, like... Well, like, what, what's Mortarion been doing? Like, now he's emerging, but... He's on, like, the plague planet. Yeah, but, like, like why did he just sit there for so long? For 10,000 years. Yeah. Like, so what, what would be... If you were a demon Primarch, what would be your reason for kind of doing a non-interference thing for the past 10,000 years? Because they're being, like, worshipped, and they're being, like... And so many of them have been like I think elevated to like demon prince. So well, well it's the past demon their... princehood. Right, right. Um, I guess yeah. That to some because they're like play. gods now. So it's like why why would they even need to? They have minions to like you know do their bidding and their affairs. Like it just to me it's like I wouldn't want to watch somebody do something that I love to do. You know. Like, yeah, I would want to be the one going and do it. And all these Primarchs are built for war. That's what they love that's doing. That's what they're bred for. Like, so to me, to yeah, it just is weird. Like, there is a, the, I like, that's a good point, and I never really thought about that the, one, is that they're like being the worship. worshipped. Yeah. And, like, for Logar, that could make sense, like... Well, do you think now he views himself as a god? It's possible, yeah. Or is he devoting everything to the worship of Chaos Gods? Mm. Could be both. Could I don't. Both. I don't really know if he's as conceited as that at this point. He, yeah. I, Lorgar is probably Same. one of the more grounded in terms of power levels. Like he understands his place in the universe next, or in the galaxy at next the to the chaos. At the bottom. <laughs> at the bottom of the demon <laughs> marks. <to> be poked. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I really think that. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. But a, when a demon is summoned, yeah. it takes energy proportionate to the power of the demon yeah is a primarch is a demon primarch a demon or is he a human a, a primarch he's both okay so, so it, think of it like the whole soul grinder where yes. the human body is his anchor yeah but he still can be banished but right because angrom was banished yeah but like he does have that uh that anchor to the material world so i don't think you have to worry about uh spending 10,000 years to try to summon them. Because that's you... what I was more thinking, is that it just takes a long time to summon these things. Hmm. Yeah. No, because I, I think most of them can just kind of come out of the Eye of Terror and hmm. do their thing. Right. Like, like we know now in 40k currently, like yeah. Magnus and Mortarion, they're just doing their thing. They just right. came out and now they're out. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think back to... I, I just recently read the Grey Knights Codex over again. And um, uh, I, I don't think it was a, a Primarch, but there was like this one demon that was summoned and it took like um, like 600 years <laughs> to summon this demon or something. And it was just like a whole thing that they would yeah. sacrifice one thing and then they would sacrifice another. Yeah. And they were just slowly building up to this yeah. massive demon incursion. It was really cool. Yeah, so but maybe, so I'm wondering like, does that, is that required I for a demon it is. Primarch? I, I don't think it really is. Yeah. That. So they are, they are demons, so they can go through the warp. Yeah. So let's say um, you got a bunch of cultists on the far southeast, which is directly opposite of the Eye of Terror. Yeah. And they're like, I want to summon Mortarion. Maybe then they would have to do a summoning ritual, and then they could get Mortarion. Hmm. Otherwise, they have to wait for Mortarion to like. Do you really walk think Mortarion through. can be summoned? <sighs> no. Not like he would still have to like walk through the gate. But, like, because that's the thing. It's not so much that they're summoning. It's that they're opening, like, a warp rift. 
right? Okay. But also, like, hmm. when you know the tra- the name of a demon, it listens. And that's, like, one of the whole things of the Grey Knights, right? Yeah. Is that they are, like, they understand the names of demons. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, didn't someone, is it Mortarion's heart that has been carved? Yeah, by, uh, what's his name? Caldor Drago. Yeah, Drago. No, so, it, yeah, it was carved it, by Drago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Drago is the current Grandmaster of the Grey Knights. Yeah. And at one point he fought um, Mortarion. And Mortarion was a demon Primarch at this point. Yeah. Whoa. And he beat Mortarion down. And then he took his knife and he carved his name into Mortarion's heart. He car- carved his oh my gosh. Uh, like, former master's name. He carved, like, the, oh, the cause recently deceased Grandmaster right. of the Grey Knights. Okay, but, yes. yeah, that's semantics, whatever. Yeah, so um, Mortarion carves a guy's name into, like, Mortarion's heart and then banishes him. Yeah. I think wow. they did write a book on that, and they... So, there, there's two parts to... Caldor Drago. There's Matt Ward, and then there's anyone who's sane. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, and somebody who's sane, I'm pretty sure, wrote a book of Caldor Drago doing that whole Mortarion thing. And the way they did it was like, there's a hundred like gray knights around him doing rituals. It's not just like it was a one on one fight. Like, come here, Mortarion, sit down. I'm gonna, you know, it wasn't like that. Like, there's a lot of things happening behind the, behind the, wow, behind the scenes. Scenes. Happening. Right. So, um, yeah. crazy. Uh, also, like, um, I was reading up on, like, Karn, the Betrayer, mm-hmm. and they say, like, he's, like, the avatar for, like, Korn. Like, he's the physical representation yeah. on, within, like, the material realm. So, like, I don't know how that works for, like, something, like, where... He's not Ang- even where Angron, No, but he's, like, but Angron is, like, the Primarch, you know, um, for corn or whatever right the um the world eaters but you have like someone like karn who's also like a very strong symbol of yeah. you know oh and then there's and, and scorn th- is that the right name scarbrand scarbrand but i think so the whole karn and angron i think that has to do solely with um time in real space once again like angron has been in the warp other than for that 70 sector rampage that well, he did a pretty big rampage it's a pretty big rampage but like where karn is in the galaxy for the past ten thousand years doing his thing wreaking havoc right yeah where so like he's a more kill common, count is really higher yeah, he's a, he's a more common sight hmm. yeah i like i do think that it takes a lot to put a demon primarch in reality yeah it must. so but i also do think that a demon primarch doesn't really care to to go out into the yeah that's what i mean they're like kind of i think they're just they've reached the kind of maybe the status that they want like that yeah desire that drove them to join chaos in the first place they're finally being like hmm. um i don't know they've reached that they are like yeah like you said eric like designed and bred to do what they do best but they're also kind of so consumed by the selfishness that chaos brings that they yeah. maybe even at a state where they don't they just don't care huh. <laughs> yeah it's what's interesting is they also like because they released like the Mort- uh, mortarian um, model yeah right and they have like primark miniatures now yeah so yeah, reboot is out yeah so how does that like and i i haven't been in the role in the gameplay uh aspect of it for a long time uh, since they changed over yeah. to 8th. They redid everything to 8th, yeah. yeah. So, like, with them introducing models for Primarchs, like... The rules talk- are nuts, man. As In terms of lore, it's different. One thing's different, but when, another thing, when people can actually bring them, like, on table, right? Yeah. Now, it is, does that affect lore at all? When Game Shop is allowing players to literally just bring Primarchs onto the t- onto the table and you're talking about lore we're like they never come out they haven't been seen yeah, like, yeah. it's kind of this yeah. weird like well you know what what happens is like they're advancing the story now right because they they brought reboot back and then i was just doing a quick read on mortarion and it's like he sensed his brother's return so then he stepped out of the eye of terror uh yeah so whereas oh so then there there it is right there that they do have the ability to just, just walk out when yeah they want. but yeah. like and so it, that can't be it though that can't be the end of it because there's no way chaos is like well like hey maybe just sit back mortarion like even though you could unleash all these like he created seven diseases just because he felt his brother going like yeah. Nurgle would be like go do some work 
bud. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, look I, at all these gifts I'm giving you. Like, give something back. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that what Nurgle's all about? Uh, Just family, friendship, and yeah. the gift that keeps on giving. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's actually really cool. Um, Mortarion created a disease that is, and he unleashed it in the McCraig system, but it only is cured if you are close to Raboot. Yeah, which is... Which forces... And Raboot is, like, for the people. Yeah. But now he's it, like, I won't be uh, distracted by this disease. Yeah, so this was when he first woke up. Yeah. Um, they were trying to get him to stay in McCraig instead of getting him to go to Terra. Yeah, to start, like, yeah. actually, like, rebuilding the Empire. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, they kept him off the war front because he's like, the only way these people are healed is if I go see them. Yeah. Yeah. But then he was at the end. He's like, "Screw this! Like, I know where my duty lies." And so yeah. he's consigning all these people on McCraig, like his area, mm -hmm. to like death. Yeah, which is really him. pretty cool. Good guy. Good guy. Great, great, great guy. Great guy. <laughs> How many of the are they gonna like revive? I know some Primarchs are killed, but are they bring? Uh, actually, is like, that their plan to like bring killed, back? There's only a couple killed Primarchs. Like yeah, yeah. Horus is dead. Supposedly, Alpharius is dead. Yeah, but there's still Omega on. Right. So, like, you still could bring back an Alpha Legion Primarch. Yeah. Um, hmm. Ferris Manus and yeah. Sanguinius. Yeah, like, really, that's the only ones. Like, Vulcan was killed, but he's not really dead. No, he's a perpetual. So yeah, you can't really kill him. But, uh, yeah, yeah. like, I, they must have plans for all the Primarchs. And yeah. there's even been horrible, horrible rumors <laughs> of uh, them bringing Sanguinius back from the dead. Yeah. Because it's like, they don't want to shaft Blood Angel players and be like, well, sorry, you don't get a Primarch. Yeah, but, like, what about the Ferris <laughs> Manus of the world, right? They're not uh, as uh, big of a fan base. That's true. Like, Blood Angels is pretty popular. Yeah, they have their own codex. They have, like, their Blood Shard rounds and, you know. Oh, my gosh. Blood Shards. Blood Shards. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, there's, without a doubt, they're releasing, they're going to be releasing all their Primarchs. Like, yeah, I, I think really it's kind of, of like, I like the idea when they're more of in... Obscure. Yeah, yeah like I you, agree with when you, you don't know about them. They're yeah. like you can't harness them, you know. Yeah. Like they're beyond they're like a almost a um an intangible yeah. thing to grasp because they're just these powerful uh myths. like lore myths, yeah. yeah. It's like mythology, you know. But when you can bring them on the table and play with them, I think it loses some value. You're of, definitely yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, you just lose. The, the yeah. one thing I am interested to see with them bringing out Primark, so is like so all all the chaos ones become demon princes basically yeah. and it bumps their power level up i'm curious how they're going to keep the loyalists in line with the primarch stat wise and I mean, like fluff wise because like well, if fluff you wise is easier to me and even stat line wise because you can well stat line wise is easy easy you can just give them whatever stats you want but fluff wise it's like okay so now why is Rebuke Gilliman, yeah. he's an easy example because of his lore, but why is he as good as Mortarion? But they have to be on relatively equal footing, right? Or else Mortarion would just win. Yeah, like, well, and, it, it, I, and the whole point is to have, like, these awesome characters, but if you're like, well, the lawyers aren't that awesome. I, like, I think an, an easy thing, um, an easy out to that, which yeah. might not be the best answer, is that chaos is unpredictable. So And it can work against you as much as it can work with you. Ah. And Zinch... And corn could be rooting for like that. That's my easy answer. Yeah, you my, don't even like that. But my sure, other one is sure. that Raboot is just smarter. He's I know, a better but... tactician, so his rules are gonna include more uh, beneficial things for his like team. Whereas, and and that's what I would say. Like, sure, but, he's not his toughness isn't as high, and his armor isn't as high. Yeah, but he's army wide a, buffs. Yeah, that's what I more yeah. would play it up to. Yeah, like the rule. Yeah, uh. even even for fluff though, it would be like. Raboot can command his entire legion, his chapter to action, whereas Mortarion, like, how many Death Guard did you really bring with him? So, them? he's, like, the only example, though, where you can really say that. Because, like... Rogal Dorn? He could command all the Imperial Fists okay, I know, and the Black I know, Templar. But you say that as if, like, the traitor Primarchs don't know a thing about tactics. If they didn't they just know, conquer the entire galaxy, you know? Like, yeah. they're tacticians. They know what they're doing. I think the Loyalists could bring more power to bear. I know, but it it doesn't level the playing field. Like everyone they wants might to not charge. Level it. The, I know, but that's not what the fans want. The fans want it so they can mm -hmm. charge their primarchs at each other, right? That's yeah. what they want. They don't want it, so it's like oh, that well, doesn't make any just, sense. It doesn't have to. That's just what the players want, and that's what Games Workshop is going to have to do in order to keep the fans happy. Because if they release <laughs> uh, a primarch who's only 
slightly better than a chapter master. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like no, that, he, that would he's be not bullshit. gonna sell. Like yeah. And Games Workshop's ultimate goal is money. Is my money, my personal money, <laughs> which you've given Mark's, a lot. Mark's, Mark's money. Mark's His personal money. money. Yeah. Mark has funded Games Workshop. <laughs> I have. <laughs> but yeah, like, so if they release a Primark who is not like this awesome force where he struggles against the Carnifex, and he just is completely irrelevant if you toss in a, a Chaos Primark. Right. What's the point? The only thing, yeah, and so, so they need to be powerful. Yeah. Because the scale needs to be bumped up. Yeah. But all this does is sets the path for Hero Hammer. It, it has become that, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Where it it has, and it also has Chapter hasn't. tactics have been interesting. Uh, yeah, they have been in regiment uh, rules. And, but it has become mm. Hero Hammer, but it's kind of nice, too, because they have uh, army buffs. Like, if you're within six inches of Reboot, you get a reroll to hit. Yeah, yeah. So, like, Reboot is awesome. But it's also what makes them amazing is the benefit right. of, but yeah. which is which is what I see mostly happening with your Primarchs. Yeah, is that like I see like a huge Inspirer buff or whatever around yeah. all of them. And yeah. So. But also, uh, this isn't a tabletop con. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I was more curious like the lore side of it. So Reboot I don't. Gilliman, I don't think they will balance it. So Reboot Gilliman, he is he can stand toe to toe with. Uh, uh, Magnus and Mortarion right now because he has a sword of the Emperor and also when he died he was kind of encased in like pseudo dreadnought armor like if you look at his model he's wearing like crazy armor mm -hmm. and if you compare his Forge World model which is 30k Kay. and his 40k the 40k model is significantly bigger do you think that's on purpose or do you think that's just a primaris thing where they're no, like, no, that's, bigger and better that's on purpose because like if you look at his armor it, yeah. it it doesn't look like it's his body. Like the scale is weird, and it looks like he's wearing something more than just power armor. Okay. It almost yeah. So. So, but so that's here's how the thing, they're like, able to balance them. Do they do that with every Primark? Well, that's my point. I'm yeah, curious yeah, what because yeah. they're gonna have to do it. They're gonna have to, especially if you have a loyalist Primark who's amazing, and then every other Primark's a yeah. piece of shit. Because what that's not gonna sell. <laughs> what it should be is that the Primarchs are technically on equal footing. Yeah. But they're all just different. Yeah, that's what it should be. Right. Well, but, that, that's what you would hope for, but yeah. not necessarily because, like... But lore-wise, no. Right, no, exactly. Because, because wouldn't Angron, the Chaos Primarchs be way more powerful? That's, they've that's the point. They've ascended they've so, to like, yeah. yeah. And they've yeah. actually, they actually can grow to be 40 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's my whole thing. What has Chaos been doing in the war? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They've been growing. <laughs> They've, They've been just growing. been slowly growing. They've been drinking their protein shakes and doing push-ups. Yeah. There's a little, like, plastic dinosaurs you buy at the dollar store and <laughs> oh, put it yes. in water, <laughs> and they just grow and grow. <laughs> so you put you put the Primark in warp-infused water. There you yeah. go. And they grow And they grow 40 times their size. Okay, so, yeah. so that question is answered. <laughs> is it? It is. <laughs> They've just been growing. Just Next. add water. That's all. That's all they need. Warp-infused warp water. Warp warp infused water. water. Yeah. I like your... Warp Warp dust. Warp dust. <laughs> you just snort copious amounts of warp dust. Uh, okay, I don't know if we really... I feel like we have closure on that question, <laughs> but we're going to just move on. <laughs> uh, okay, and this is probably the best question for Mark. How has the gene seed corrupted in the last 10,000 years? I'm, I'm not totally sure exactly what you mean by that. Like, I, I mean... Like, gene seeds all have mutations. Yeah. Potentially, right? Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure the ultramarine one is pretty pure. Yeah. And so would, like, the Grey Knight one. Yeah. So... Right, but, like, the Vulc the Salamanders one, that one's pretty corrupted. Well, it just turns them black. That's the thing. Well, that's a corruption. It's a mutation. Eric? It's a mutation. <laughs> we got in trouble for oh saying an F word, and now you <laughs> oh just said gosh. black people are corrupted. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay. And so here I thought I was the most racist of the group, but Jordan has done the first offense. Eric has done the that second is offense. Not that hey, enough. I am not racist. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let me think of another mutation. I, I, I think I kind of know what you're saying. Like, uh, some can't spit acid anymore. Like, Raven Guard can't spit acid. Right. They've lost that. Or, like, so, the Thousand Suns had a mutation, didn't they? They have, like, the flesh change. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm saying is, like, when if. Uh, someone who has been a, a Chaos Space Marine, let's say you've yeah. been a member of the Chaos Space Marine yeah. for a couple hundred years, you're getting a little mutated. When you die, yeah. and they pull out your gene seed with the, the, the Narthesium, your gene seed carries part of that mutation with it. Yeah. So how corrupted 
is this gene seed. Very. But the thing is, they don't care that it's corrupted, right? So let's say... Do you, but do you think it's they are less of a space marine now? No, no. So let's say um, they lo- a common one is the ability to spit acid. Most chapters have lost that now. But you uh, say uh, Chaos Astartes has lost that ability. Whatever. Now they're fucking spitting warp acid at you. You know, like... So yeah, they're... <laughs> They lose maybe a little bit of it, but okay. they gain a lot in their warp ability. Can, and there there are some gene seeds that are per, like they are essential to becoming a space marine, like uh, like the black carapace, right? Right. Yeah, like you have to have that. Like obviously they haven't lost that. If they did, they would not use that gene seed. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking mo- yeah. now. Then, like over the course of like gene seed being implanted and grown and implanted, yeah. like. At some point, it will degrade so much that the gene seed no longer is viable. Yeah, and and the thing too is like we we were saying was uh, they they are taking loyalist gene seed. They took nine hundred from the blood blood e- angels angels blood eagles blood eagles, <laughs> eagles blood of angels blood. <laughs> eagles of blood right. So like they are replenishing their stuff like that. Yeah. If if the if they didn't have access to those like new uncorrupted ones, eventually. Yeah. Would all the gene seed just corrupt so foully that they couldn't be used? Yeah, but, like, I'm sure it won't really matter, though. Well, at that point, like, you'd no longer be a space marine. Like, they just the, the legions, the corrupted legions would just fail to exist. Mm. At, like, uh, just due to regular attrition. No, I know what you're saying. Like, once again, there's only a couple that have to degrade, like the black carapace, and that's really the main one but like but eventually so if if they lose the ability to go into like their coma comatose REM sleep yeah sure yeah they've lost that but they're still killers they don't they don't need sleep they're hopped up on warp dust you know right. like yeah i know i know what you're saying i just i kind of like to think that um like the gene seed is actually extremely corrupted oh absolutely it is yeah and so corrupted to the point that it wouldn't work Mm. under normal circumstances and the only way it does work is that the chaos gods are supplementing it yeah and like they're okay with mutations too like but i mean like like if you if you try to administer a regular gene seed in say you're doing it um oh gosh on any planet right say a black templar wants to raise up one of their new initiates and they have a gene seed and i I can't a neophyte i can't believe i'm (laughs) saying this for black templar yeah (laughs) <laughs> but they, they have, like, if they were to use the same gene seed that, like, the Black Legion is using, it just wouldn't work. Because chaos has no part of it. And in order for a chaos marine to work, it's so degraded. Chaos has to be a part of it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, if you try to do it... But isn't that what chaos is all about? Like, isn't that the point of being chaos is to get warp powers from chaos? So to lose... To rely on them is... Isn't that kind of the whole shtick? Yeah. But... So the so to me this raises yeah. the question: What happens if a chapter loses the blessing of their chaos god? Do you think that they could just lose the ability to create new marines? No, because there are cha- chaos uh, legions that don't worship even chaos gods. Yeah. you know, like but there's, there's a difference between not actively worshiping and a god not blessing. There's you. one. There's one of the uh, chaos legions that uh, night lords, no, or alpha legion. One of those guys they refuse like religion. And many other, and they only believe in like um, science. Yeah. Science? Not, no, they believe in science. <laughs> I don't know what they, which one it is, but yeah. they like they don't. Um, yeah, it's they're they're not necessarily worshiping even like yeah, the chaos n- god. Night it's lords are like, definitely like that. They yeah. use the ter- the the chaos gods as a terror factor, but they're yeah. not necessarily. Okay, but so it's who, not like they're siphoning power off of yeah. well, off of them. It doesn't have to be willful. You can you can kill someone not in the name of corn. Corn is still worshipped. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can you can foil like a master plan of someone, even though you hate Zinch. Zinch is still gaining worship because of that. Right. That's yeah. like you don't have to willfully worship in order to give a god power. And obviously that god is will bestow blessing upon what feeds him. So mm-hmm. what I'm saying is, if there is a chapter who completely falls out, like, do you think? Like their gene seed would just stop functioning and to create new marines because I I, I, I I really don't think it would. I man. wonder. Like, I would just wonder like how much is necessary of chaos in order for the marines to work. I, I really don't think it's a whole bunch. Like because gene seed is like a lot. It's very 
I don't know the full history of gene seed, what exactly is part of it, but I know it's lots of like physical, you know, yeah. augmentation, new organs, stuff yeah. like that. So a lot of it's like physical stuff, right? Right, and, but and the body also it, has to accept that. Yeah. So what if what if chaos twists reality and says a regular body would never accept this because the gene seed is so corrupt that it will it's just so full so of chaos here, that it would kill you. So here's the thing, right? So let's say if we've thought of this idea, yeah. Um, uh, apothecaries have thought of this idea too, so therefore they're weeding out any of these super crazy, and they're just nipping it in the bud. So they're not just recycling this crazy corrupted gene seed over and over and over and then like dope but think of how crazy that would be if they built like a unit also of just ridiculous <laughs> yeah like, yeah seed. like and fabius bile does that kind of thing oh yeah he's like he works yeah. a lot on it but like so once again like if we thought of it chances are they've thought of it so they are trying to keep their gene seed good that makes and, sense and if a uh, chapter does get so or a legion does get so corrupted they're just gonna take blood angel gene seed right exactly you know, they'll like, just take someone else's like because they don't really care they they just need the gene seed. They don't have that loyalty. Like you're never gonna have an ultramarine take a blood angels one. No, because they, heresy. Yeah, her, yeah. They're they're more loyal to their cause. Where chaos right. doesn't care where the power comes. Like they okay. just need the power. And that makes sense. It, it's an interesting thought to think about. Like how corrupted is too corrupted. Right. But or like how much of the gene seed is even necessary anymore. Because chaos supplements. Yeah. So I'm like, well, e if in my brain, I'm like, if they just run out of gene seed completely, could chaos just create marines? No. no they no. still har they still harvest like gene seeds from genes gene seeds from like fallen chaos. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm just the wondering. Chances of it, it running out is like. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a chance. That's. Yeah. I'm I, more I know posing the question: What happens? And we've if... answered your question. Yeah. Now pick it and go. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> demonic possession. Yeah, I don't think we really touched on it in humans. We talked a lot about vehicles being possessed, yeah, but yeah. um, oof, my ankle just cracked. That was a loud <laughs> one. Yeah, that's one thing that a lot of uh, heretics do. They open themselves up for possession, and they lose themselves, but then they gain all these powers. Um, I have here written. Is it as fun as the Galvor back would have us believe? Uh, Mark, can you explain <laughs> what the Galvor back are? Uh, they are the first demon-possessed marines. They're from the word bearers. Okay. Um, Google a picture of them on Forge World. Sure. So, um, so all our listeners can see what they look like? Well, no, just so you can see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but uh, they're the first ones that open themselves up to... Uh, now, I do have a little bit of a... Um issue to pick with that do share and i will quickly rebuttal and rebuke you um <laughs> the book i just read yeah happens oh i know exactly samus samus, samus. you yeah. oh so the first willing <laughs> i'm gonna say the first willing uh you're, and, you're and always willing the the uh the neat thing about the galvor bach too yeah is like um they They like can open themselves up to demon possession during combat, but then they kind of can revert back. Revert back. See, that's not a common thing. Yeah, yeah. Where where Samus was Samus, it was no longer. I forget which Astartes became Samus. Jubal was Jubal, his name. Yeah, Kazik Jubal. Yeah, but, uh, but the and the Samus has a miniature too. If you're curious. Oh, does he really? He does on Forge World. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm staying at the Calvor back. They yeah, are like, super mutated. And they're the size of, like, Primaris Marines. Like, they're big. Oh, that's pretty cool. But. Um, yeah, so Samus, like, when I was reading, um, like, the Luna Wolves got to this area. Yeah. And it was, like, one of the first times that one of the Mornival, his name is Loken, he's a really popular character. Yeah. It's, like, the first time he ever witnesses, like, a malicious form of the warp. Yeah. So he's, mm. like, losing his mind. This, like... Astartes, that's like part of like the mm -hmm. Horus's like cadre, is losing his mind over yeah. what happened to his brother, and his brother started shooting Astartes, which is unheard of. Like Lo like Loken just couldn't do anything about it because it yeah. was so foreign to him. He froze, and that was like when he learned that the warp is malicious, not necessarily sentient, but evil. Yeah, right. And so, um, 
like Samus was this thing that happened, and Jubal had like a mental chink in his armor. So yeah. the thing you like about demon, demonic possession is, on some level, you have to be willing. Yeah, because you have to crave that. Like willing or broken, though, are kind of different things. Because willing could like you're using the power of chaos, where broken is like your will's broken, and then therefore they can like take it, like torture and stuff you know your will if you're over. weak-minded could you succumb to that'd be the other way of doing it too like although i don't know i don't know because like if that were the case and yes demons do possess everywhere but they don't yeah there like, are very strict circumstances in which a demon can actually be called into our world and possess yeah like so if you're just a weak-minded human a demon's not just going to possess you but if you're a weak-minded human and your mother's a witch and does a ritual to possess you then the demon could possess you but you can still fight it you could but if you're a weak-minded human then you can't fight it. but like the you're not just a weak-minded human and then you get possessed like there has to be another step involved yeah or else they would just possess everyone because the majority of humanity is going to be weak-minded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I think I think there does have to be some kind of consigning over to the demon. Yeah, there like, definitely That's does. why Abaddon. Yeah. Abaddon's crazy. Yeah, cuz he doesn't want to become a demon prince because he doesn't want to give that uh like lose control. Or yeah. Anything. Yeah. But exactly. could you he doesn't want to have to rely on anybody. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't <laughs> want to lose himself in it like Fulgrim oh. has lost himself. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mortarian is like it's still Mortarian, but it's different. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's like another question is how how much of you is kept. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I think that has to do a lot with the demon that you that possesses you yeah. because I could see a kind of like a cool power struggle going on between like the demon and you inside like which one of you controls the actions hmm. right like if yeah. Mortari or if Angron loves fighting and the demon that possesses him actually loves tricks <laughs> right who wins yeah right and obviously you kind of go with like what you're yeah you're comfortable with uh, what, as a demon I guess. <laughs> what, one thing to point out the the demon primarchs are not demons like they are not possessed like Mortarion is they're not, not possessed. possessed no they're they're not possessed they're just given the powers of the warp to the point where they become demons themselves. What's the difference between that and someone who, like, claims a blessing of the warp? Like a champion? Uh, a champion just has a blessing where, um, like, a demon primarch becomes a part of the warp. Like, they have the warp powers. Like, so, um, I guess there's a little bit of a distinction here. E- like, yeah. So, is Mortarion, yeah. like, given a part... Of Nurgle's power, yeah, he is, yeah. He he becomes but essentially. But what's what is a the demon. difference between that, yeah, and a demon? Because a demon is built on Nurgle's power. No, I'm just saying that uh, Primarchs are not possessed by demons. By they themselves dip, yeah. are demons now. They have become demons themselves. So you're saying Mortarion could possess someone? Potentially, yeah. I don't know the power of what they have in, in that terms, but yes. Because they are now demons themselves. In that case... They have been giving the war- given war powers. In that case, that makes complete... Like, if they are demons, that makes yeah. complete sense that they can't just pop out wherever they want. But they're and they still would... harnessed to their body is the thing. And that's why they can just pop out of the warp when they sense that their brother's up to something. But through the Eye of Terror. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because any You're demon not... can technically walk out through the Eye of Terror. I think it's a little harder for them. Right, but... They, it, they can do like, it, but the further they go away from it, the harder it gets. Right, which... Which is going to be the same thing that happens to Mortarion. No, because but he has the be- anchor of a body. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. He's got... I was going to say that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, it would be just as hard, but now, once he's in the Materium, he has the anchor of his original body. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, but on the counterthought of that, when a demon possesses a human, like, it's not easy for the demon to stay in control. Or maybe to stay in control, but, like, it's weak. Like, he has to focus to stay here. I don't know if... Don't they? I don't think so. Once they have that anchor, like, once they're possessing a human... Like, like uh, my prime example would be demon hosts that the Inquisitors use, that some Inquisitors use. I assume, de- like, Inquisitors like, would mm-hmm. bind them. Well, isn't that what kind of possession is? Well, there's, kinda? well okay, there's, you're right, you're right, sorry. Because but, there's no... But, chained up, kind of. The Imperium yeah, has no yeah. good way right but now. But I think that so. binding is more so to bind the demon to the Inquisitor's will, as opposed to binding the demon to the Materium, because the demon has the human that binds him to the... Th- Materium. Think once again, like the soul grinders, yeah. they have that metal bound to the materium. They have that human bound to the materium. 
the reason I'm not sure I think it's as simple as that is um, when I'm reading through the Grey Knight Codex, they talk about in like one of their um, experimentation lobbies or whatever, they're trying to figure out the best way, like how do you beat a demon? Because every demon that a Grey Knight has ever beaten goes back to the warp. They know he's coming back. Yeah, it's a losing battle because Grey Knights can't be replaced as quickly as demons can, mm -hmm. and they don't understand that. So they're trying to build a way to, like, if you can't destroy a demon, how do you permanently uh, remove its ability to fight? Mm -hmm. So they're working on I. I I think it's called the Tesseract or something, but it is definitely alien tech yeah. that they are mm. fooling around with, that they have successfully trapped demons inside, yeah. and then they just leave it in a room, yeah. and the demon can no longer do anything. So, Whoa. if that were possible to so fully anchor a demon, they would be doing that all the time. It's hard, though. You like, need they the would... rights, you need the demon's name, you need all these steps. If... The demon might even have to be beaten, broken, and, you know, not to the so point So this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Why wouldn't a Grey Knight, if they're like, okay, uh, what's what's the first Doom Breed? Is that Doom Grind? Like, Doom the breed? most powerful yeah. demon? Doom. Yeah, do Doom Breed. Okay, so Doom Breed is, like, a really powerful demon, and yeah. I'm sure we'll talk more about him. But he's cataclysmic in when he comes. I, mean, yeah. I think he's come, like, once or twice. Or... Yeah something but why, times. why would hmm. the gray knights not summon him yeah into a body and then just bind it uh, maybe doom Breed does he knows and he's not gonna go into a body of a human but, can a human even handle that well yeah, they have to and that's it well, well holding a corn demon and holding the greatest demon prince of all time power levels are different um, but so, over nine thousand. So, so once again, I don't think. <laughs> well, they they have bound a demon in that skull in yeah. their chapter hall, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and they have a bunch of guys constantly like, watching. Yeah, it, like, and that's like, why they're not doing that because the amount of effort to keep one trapped is enormous. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why, like, because they can stay why, in humans forever. How is because long they the want? human is willing and the demon willing. <sighs> Or has been broken or whatever. Because, okay, so here's my example, yeah. right? Fulgrim, not willing. Broken. Different. Very, very different. Like, sure, he was willing, but then, like, well, he was broken. I don't, he I don't know enough his, about Fulgrim. Yeah, he was willing, he accepted it, but was tricked, but now he cannot get the demon out. The demon has taken. Like, he, he broke Fulgrim. Like, so, that would be the big thing, like, you can't just bind demons to humans and then trap them in the Grey Knight room and be like, well, we're all good. These humans are fine. Because <laughs> that's what I'm wondering. Like, no, because, like, the demon, first of all, isn't going to go into that body, right? Because you're not I, summoning a demon. I believe like, there is a, a certain amount of the demon has no choice, and it's when you know the name of the demon. Yeah, yeah. But, because that's how they banish demons, and demons have to listen to them. The other thing about demons is that it's not a finite number. So you banish a thousand demons. Corn is still getting stronger and stronger. He just makes a thousand more. And the power to required to like trap uh, big big demon princes like Doombreed, they they just they can't do it. They don't have enough resources to do that. Okay. So that's that's what I would say. Then again, I'm not an exorcist. Right. Or a heretic. <laughs> or a heretic. I'm just a guy with a microphone and way too much free time. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I'd love to. I, I thought maybe potentially Fargrim's like demonhood thing would be like a short thing, but it's like pretty couple paragraphs so let's save that for another day reading eric yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's a story for sure <laughs> um yeah i i just i don't and there is the, there's also the difference of demonic possession versus summoning a demon yeah into reality yeah because you get a blood letter in yeah. reality is very different than a blood letter possessing a human yeah yeah because so, that would like when to get a physical demon here requires like a rend in space yeah. like you cut a hole in reality from um, the immaterium to the materium. Yeah. Mm. So that's like a, and that requires like a lot of blood sacrifice and a lot of planning and on, on like a, a heretic's part, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. So let's get to one of our last, one of our last questions, I think. Um, would you take the gift of demonic possession? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're a lover, not a fighter. Uh, no, why not? Oh, why would I not take yeah, it? Yeah, why would you not take it? Um, It would offer you immortality. Eh. 
Then I just have to work full time at my shitty job for I a don't think time. that's what you'd be doing just if you were demonically possessed. Just fucking wire and that. <laughs> oh my god! If you're like, if you're part of Slanish, then that might be a good time. But it could be okay. Yeah. For me, I I don't know. I'd have to deal with looking really ugly for the rest of my life. So. Not necessarily. He, here's the thing, too, though. We all live comfy lives, right? Except for me and my shitty job. Yeah. But so let's put ourselves in the place of a, a factory worker in, a, in yeah, a, yeah. a hive world with billions of people, and you're the lowest of low. Yeah, and you work in 24 so hour days, seven days a week. Wow, this person has literally working their entire life yeah uh jokes on you guys the uh sun's rotation is actually 40 hours yeah exactly that's what <laughs> that's why they can get away with it right yeah um that would suck i would definitely open myself up consider to care. it i wouldn't even consider it at that point <laughs> right i you make me work one more hour this week and i could consider it <laughs> in real in real in life real. and i got a pretty cushy life <laughs> but uh yeah i I don't know. So right. Okay, sorry. Well, no, it's just it's the individual individuality that you lose. Yeah. Right. Like you. Like yes. Like you gain power, but are you you anymore? Eh. No, eh. you're not. Like you're but, giving yourself up to something greater. Yeah. But at that point, just keep working on that factory line, making bolter shells, and you're just you're contributing, contributing to something greater. Yeah. You yeah. can join the Imperial Guardsmen. Ugh. You ever see that picture of uh, a Templar and he's like next to an Imperial Guardsman and he's just got his hand on his shoulder. He's like, cheer up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I could definitely see why there's so many people possessed and so many heretics in 40K because it's so grim and dark. Yeah, you're just one sucky, among the many. Sucky yeah, life. Where at least if you give yourself into possession – you could potentially get somewhere. I understand that. Yeah. And that sentiment that, of like, I'm obscure versus I could be this. That's yeah. Yeah. pretty powerful. Yeah. Tim. I think it's, yeah, you guys hit like the, the nail on the head. I mean, cause like, I think in that world it's grim, you know, people don't have a lot of happy things. I imagine. Yeah, you're, you're, the highlight of your like, day is you get double rations. Yeah, so it's kind of like <laughs> <laughs> it's, it seems like I think chaos, but you're bar. still taxed on that, so yeah, you're yeah. only getting you one and a half rations. Yeah, I think so. like chaos is kind of like a short seems like a short path to glory for many, yeah. but it's it has an eternal consequence for whoever you know joins chaos. They're part of that, just as much as like in the Imperium, they're they're part of the greater good for of humanity like you said making bulger shells but you know i don't know and i think too like it's either they're um some of them too are just born into it right like yeah they're born true. into societies that um like i was reading on like the plague planet like i was shocked that there was actually a population of people like who <laughs> live in like villages cowering in village they live on the plague planet yeah, and they have to worship Nurgle to um, to have their pain like, Oof. Um, like alleviate. yeah, alleviate because oh. like they live in constant pain, right? But I was like, do people live? Can you imagine if you were born on that planet? <laughs> like you're in there, you have no choice, right? So yeah, no and, one's coming and to save you. People like the option of freedom is to like get like daemon possession or or try to aspire in the ranks of chaos because they have nothing else. So yeah, for some it's just like yeah life you know? there's no option there's behind no option it. yeah but it's crazy like some of the chaos worlds and you know <laughs> oh yeah very, very bleak <laughs> yeah yeah that one is particularly bad like because at least if you're born on like corn's death world or world yeah it's just like okay so you're gonna go out in a blaze of glory essentially yeah right? you know yeah but just living in constant pain being like infected and your arm falls off and you're still alive and it's just like yeah Ugh. yeah it's pretty ghastly. Yeah, that would be ghastly. Get it? Ghastly, like gas. toxic gas. Yeah, like toxic. farts. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what you've been really like releasing really 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 this whole episode, and then you <laughs> fart from your arm. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> That's yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah, twisted mind. <laughs> uh, you guys, thirteen or something. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, Jordan, would you take the gift? 
it, so let, let's set the setting. Uh, you, so we'll give you two settings here. You're on that that Nurgle world. That's planet. the thing is, it would depend on the circumstances. So in that setting, are you following the Nurgle? If you're on that Nurgle world, constant. Your life is just a and your wiener pain. just ro- rotted off. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the wiener. <laughs> Um, yeah, like, I probably would. Like, do these people, do they know the consequences of being possessed by demons? I'm sure they would. Would they understand, like, like, it's not like, uh, like, they're getting tricked into it. No, I think they would understand there, to some degree. Yeah, there definitely would be some trickery, but someone who, like, grows their whole up their whole life understanding what Nurgle is and, like, yeah. what's required of you, yeah. they probably, probably understand pretty well what's going on. So, I, I, I would almost, like, I... I feel like I'd prefer like suicide to either of those options. Mm, but okay. so you wouldn't then. Um, yeah, that, yeah. that means definitely so, on the high world he's not doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sad because I was gonna make another joke like, oh, so now you're working on the high world and the shell <laughs> explodes and your wiener falls off. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you choose chaos? <laughs> but you didn't let no, me. No, the wiener. <laughs> yeah, always comes back to the wiener. Oh man, Jordan, we think your wiener is very important to you. <laughs> I've seen it, and it is something to be proud of. A specimen, as a it specimen. were. A specimen. A freak of nature. Like, are we on? It's not for me, because no. I'm not into hipster weighing, but if I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd be all a over A specimen. It. Yeah, yeah. If that's quite, what you're into. Quite intriguing. Uh, yikes. <laughs> all right. So, the taint of chaos. It is no longer a family-friendly <laughs> podcast. I understand. It hasn't been for a while. Yeah. Okay. I actually just reread that comment. Oh uh, yeah, of the guy, and yeah. you were like, "Yeah, like we're family-friendly-ish." And Ish. he was, he was like, "Do you think it'd be okay if I listened to this in the car with my kids?" And I just oh, burst whoa. out laughing. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, we're talking about genocide and, you know, murder. You probably right. shouldn't be, regardless of if we right. talk about space marine wing. Or if we <laughs> drop an F-bomb. You know, yeah. like, it's like, not, your kids hear about the F-bomb all the time. It's a child-friendly <laughs> universe to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't all think right, I, so, so, Eric, would you allow yourself to be demon-possessed? <laughs> like, well, let me know? talk about the consequences of demon possession. And it would be very family-friendly if I did. <laughs> oh, Some man. people. I yeah. love it. <laughs> oh, demonic possession do you well. <laughs> so i'm just i'm more like i like to go back to abaddon about it like yeah do you think a chaos um like yeah he is a very strong will yeah but like any demon is singularly stronger you could find a stronger demon than any person in the materium mm-hmm. right so there are rules that a demon has to follow, or else there would be certain people that are completely immune to chaos. There is. Who? Uh, any loyalist. Immune? Yeah, because they didn't follow to chaos, therefore immune to chaos. So that means no, at no part in their life... Like, so here's where the broken versus willing comes in. Like, yeah, okay. No, I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm making a silly argument. <laughs> <point. laughs> well, no, no, no. Like, you're not, you're not wrong. Like, people refused the gift. Yeah. Or they refuse to fall to chaos. Does that mean they're immune to chaos? No, no, not really. I know. I was just being silly. So then, so then, what does it take? Like, because I want to go back to it because I don't really feel comfortable with where it's left off. <laughs> okay. I, I don't feel like there's real closure on it. <laughs> okay. So what don't you like exactly? What does it take for a boot to get possessed? Nothing. He has proven that he will not. Okay. And and the th- the thing is too possession and fall into chaos are different yeah like working for chaos under your own free will is one thing but then to give your life over to chaos is different it's a step above right but we but we did just prove that or you maybe not prove but we kind of agreed that the victim of the demon possession doesn't necessarily have to be willing no i know so but so so for Reboot Gilliman to fall to chaos or to get corrupted, it's not going to happen. Like, like lore, like for the story wise. No, no, sure. no. Like, e- like, so he was tempted by each of the chaos gods when he came back to life. Like, um, uh, Nurgle, like, did that whole, uh, Nurgle plague or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Mortarian did it, but. Yeah. And then, uh, Slanish did, like, uh, they set up, like, this giant parade street. Oh, yeah. Something. I did, I did. Yeah. About and, that. like, uh, Slanish was whispering like this could be your life like this glory or they did a bunch of different yeah, things yeah. where he was tempted by all four chaos gods and he said no so does that like, mean he's immune no one's immune so what would it take I don't know like he's immune like 
I don't know what it would take. Yeah, and I know what it would take for me, growing up on a hive world and getting my wiener rotted off. <laughs> Buy a boulder shell then. <laughs> so, so I do think, I'd, like, there's, like, if you were... It's a progress. It's like a, like, they would fall... If he would fall at some point like the other Primarchs who did fall, fall, and then he would just be around Chaos so much he would maybe reach the point where he would decide. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I level, do but, think hmm. there has to be willingness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no matter what like happens... A, a broken shell, but you can't break, like, a Primarch. Like, you can break a normal person. Happens all the time to people. Yeah. but Who breaks them? Like... FBI interrogators. <laughs> Don't even get me started. On no, but CIA. you know, you know what I mean. Like he. What? So his, I'm wondering, who's mind breaking. Like, are you breaking the physical body of this person? That could be a way are to you, do it. Are you breaking like their psyche? Like, yeah. It, I know different people have different vices or different ways to break them. Right. Like, for me, you go punch a cat. You just broke me. <laughs> you just wrecked me. That's how easy it is. Hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know, I know what you're saying. We could talk about this forever, but yeah. I. I because I also think of a Grey Knights, like yeah. the amount of training they have to go through in order to be like secure yeah. in who they are. Like, because a Grey Knight has never fallen to chaos, yeah. and that's kind of like a point of pride. Well, except for them. that. <laughs> Don't <laughs> I'm kidding. you? There's nothing. There's yeah. nothing. Don't you even yeah. say <laughs> anything, <laughs> Trolls. Yes. So that, that's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah. I think there is a point where you can be so secure in who you are that you are immune to the to yeah the, you are immune to like the whisperings of chaos yeah like so otherwise I, you would have fallen to but chaos. i also think that anyone can do that anyone can get to that point absolutely yeah sure like i think we just found a way how to beat chaos just be immune to chaos yeah, yeah just, just be get immune. power though <laughs> just be just immune. be immune, immune to chaos i don't understand what the problem is, is. okay <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Well, that's solved. that's your quote, I guess. Just be immune. Just we be just immune. solved just be immune the, to chaos. <laughs> the problem, guys. Guys, I've got it. <laughs> your, your picture, too. Just be immune to chaos. <laughs> Classic. Um, I don't know. I think that pretty much... Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I gotta get to bed. Hi, you're a little baby. I gotta work tomorrow for eight whole hours. <laughs> Do you know what that's like on a man's psyche? <laughs> you're broken. He's about to be broken. <laughs> He's about to accept the gift of chaos. <laughs> it's gonna oh, come back boy. a different the, man. The or, one uh, guy at work, uh, his name's Wyatt, and yeah. uh, he started listening to this podcast or whatever. And then I, I said the one thing. I'm like, oh, but it was like, my job requires blood, sweat, and tears yeah. <laughs> or something like that. And he texted me and he just said me that and like, ha, 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 ha. So he's going to love this episode. <laughs> he knows. Yeah. <laughs> he knows. I'm actually quite content in my work. In case, <laughs> just in case my you're employer listening. won't know that I'm shaking my head. Just make sure you don't electrocute your wiener off. <laughs> Otherwise, chaos. Otherwise, follow the chaos. Oh man, cool. Um, well, this was a good episode. I had fun. Yeah, it was fun. It's great. Thanks Thank for having you. me, guys. Yeah, thanks yeah. for showing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I appreciate we made it. it happen. It's good. Yeah. It was fun. It was a good time. Um, just to do a quick reiteration, we have those two contests. We are going to release some information online about those. Oh, that's a good idea. It's funny. I never would have thought of that. Yeah, that's why <laughs> I do it and not you. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, like check it, us out. check it out on Facebook. If you need any more clarification, just send us a message. Yeah. But uh, we'll see you in two weeks. I feel like one thing we don't say Uh-oh. enough is uh, uh, rate our podcast and give us a review. Like, or just even give us five stars or four stars or whatever you think you're worth. We're worth. We're, oh, you're I, worth. You're worth two. Well, the, I'm <laughs> worth a five. I don't. <laughs> okay, meet it in the middle. I'm a five of five guy, kind of guy, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, like, I don't think we've got a whole bunch, no, even though, like. Not really. Yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny. So once I started doing my, or this podcast, I, I went back to all the podcasts I listened to. Yeah. And I, I did that because it's like. You're such a nice guy. Well, it's like. I never would have done it, but then like now I know why they're begging for it. Like yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah that's it, all. It does help us. We, we've never we've never really said it too much. No. I don't put any. Focus yeah, rate on us it. on iTunes. And I won't mention anything for another four episodes because you'll forget about it though. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what half this stuff oh, is. Oh boy. Uh, rate us on iTunes. Leave us a review. You can also do the same thing on Facebook, but iTunes is a little more important. Um, but I mean, you're gonna have to do the iTunes the Facebook thing anyway if you want um, money from us. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. See you later, guys. Have a good one. Peace out. Head nod by Tim. <laughs> <laughs>